Kia ora and welcome to the first stop of the 2023 Crackworks World Tour. We're in Rotorua, New Zealand. Boom! Welcome to the 2023 Crankworks Downhill Travel Guide. For this season, we will be taking you to four breathtaking destinations on three different continents. So saddle up, because the Crankworks Downhill Travel Guide is the hottest ticket on two wheels to all four of this year's exciting events. Kicking things off in Rotorua, New Zealand, challenging the athletes from the start on the all-new RockShox Tanua Downhill, a track known for high speed, high risk, and high adrenaline racing. Same continent, different country, Crankworks Cairns, known as the paradise edition of the season, with technical segments right after the start and a long sprint to the finish line, filling the athletes' legs with lactate. Final sprint, Nick Hanna. Oh, and he's close. Oh, he's close. Oh, that's a high gap. No way. No way. Oh. Nick goes into the lead. Over to Europe, where the beautiful Alps around Innsbruck play host to the third of four events this season. The bike park Mooters is known among many amateur bike enthusiasts, but also offers unique challenges for the pros on this narrow course through the dense trees. With the Whistler Mountain Bike Park, the final race of the season is a push to master the 11.99 track. That's our world tour. Five months of high-flying big bike action that begins in New Zealand in March and ends in Canada in July. We promise you'll enjoy the ride. So thank you for joining us here in the Whakariwa Riwa Forest. I'm only going to say that once this afternoon. And look who else is here. Five times world champion Louis Bruni making an appearance. Jenna Hastings, the junior world champion. Loris Fergier, another fast Frenchman. What can he do this afternoon? Louise Ferguson, an incredible World Cup season last year and a great summer series on the South Island. And the king and queen of Crankworks, Baz van Stiebergen and Caroline Buchanan. I'm Rob Warner, this is Elliot Jackson, a Crankworks favourite, a man who used to race the series. Actually, looking back through the results, you pushed Bruni all the way here a few years back. He is lucky I am very unfit right now <laughs> because I would be doing the same today. <laughs> I, I think he classes this as, an, as his off season. We can still get you an entry, but what a place to be. I've, you know, had a lot to hype to live up to coming here. People telling me this is the best trail riding on the planet. I've had three days in the forest. It is. It is absolutely incredible. 200 kilometers of trails in there, legal ones. Many more unmarked as well. You can find it all on the Trail Forks app, but what a place to be, huh? Yeah, it is just incredible. There's no place like it in the entire world. One of the places that I just look forward to, yeah. coming back, riding. And this track is, is special this year. It's got a lot of new features. We see these big, big jumps throughout the week. You know, the first day of practice, the riders were saying it's kind of unrideable even. And we can see that it looks like this now, but that first day of practice, yeah. people were just sliding down, penguin sliding you throughout the whole track. You needed an on day one. It was bad. It was. But what's happened is the port now, look at the ruts, look at the berms, the track. It's dried out. It's going to be absolutely perfect for today, isn't it? Yeah. I think, you know, talking to some of the riders this, this morning, they said it's almost scary how much faster you're going through all these sections, kind of had to change up a couple of lines, you know, oh, yeah. switch their braking points up. So, There's plenty uh, up there to catch you out. Not easy. There's so much line choice. So many ruts, yeah, this is going to be a wild one. And actually, yesterday I was lucky enough, you might say unlucky enough, to do a lap with the national champion of New Zealand, Jess Blewett. Have a look at this. Hello, everyone. I'm in Rotorua for the start of the 2023 Crankworks World Tour. I'm at the top of the downhill, and this is Jess Blewett, <laughs> the national champion of New Zealand. She's not hanging about, and you're going to take me down. Mm -hmm. That's pretty steep, eh? Yeah, it's fun though. Um, the jumps are just down there. And here's Jess. Yeah, Jess. And she is sick. Look at her. Go on, Jess. Oh, everyone. Oh, 
<laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Are you joking? Oh my god, my arms are going to fall off. That is full on up there. Super steep top section, really natural. And then in a jump line, and it's still not over. More steep sections to come. And over the line in a time of. I think I got it. Thanks, Ross. No, thank you. I'm going to go and just, yeah, you know. You can go sit down. Yeah, I can have a little lie down. Yeah. See you a bit, Jess. Thanks. Well, I'm still sitting down after that one. I'm still recovered. On the Mountain Day, we've only got the most successful ever Crankworks female downhiller. Here's Tracy Hanna. Thank you, Rob. I am at one of the final steep sections of the track. We are very close to the finish line, just one rhythm section to go, so you need speed to enter the last few jumps. We have three main lines here. We have all the way riders left, which as you can see, comes all the way down and around the outside. And then we have riders middle, which is pretty much main line, full commitment into the middle, and then it puts you down the middle pretty fast, a little bit of a turn over the left drop, and then the main line, one of the fastest lines but more technical, is straight down riders right over those two stumps. You completely drop into the seep section. A little bit sketchy right turn before you drop over that left drop, but it gives you the most speed into the next rhythm section. Well, thank you, Tracy. She's going to be joining us in the commentary box in a few moments' time. It's been amazing to watch this track develop over the last few days, the Tanafar track. Yeah, I mean, the thing that I thought was the most interesting is you have kind of that inside line that Tracy was talking about. You shave off a lot of distance, but I was watching some people like Bernard just rail the outside, kind of get all this exit speed yeah. onto that next bit. It Wide is going to be, that's the trade-off. Like, are you willing to just push the pace, take the risk to just let off the brakes and rail the turn? It's going to be awesome. Well, we are about to go racing for the first time in 2023. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this break with the first stop for the Crankworx World Tour. Pump up your tires for the bike content on Red Bull TV. And check out the best live events, feature films, and shows. Download the Red Bull TV app for free and sign in to watch all of our content offline. Is. Oh my God. It's a crazy thing to be involved in. It's hectic, but you're in it and you're just like loving it. A reunion of friends and people in different cultures. All these cool different locations, all these different tracks. There's always so much stuff going on. People are just stoked on biking and they're just stoked to be here. Hearing so much energy around. We live for that. For the love of competition, playing my position, fucking mess, keep it. Pulling up position, he's shooting the air balls, he's jumping with missiles. They was dizzy from the clear, but the places got him tripping. Please make sure that your seatbelt is fastened. For the love of competition, yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank we acknowledge loved ones past who have paved our way to be here. And the warmth of the sun on our faces reminds us just th that this is our time. We acknowledge the Mana Fenua of this land who have enabled our access to this legendary track. Welcome to the Rock Shocks Tani Far Downhill 2023. I'm Rob Warner alongside Tracy Hanna and Elliot Jackson. And we're about to get this world tour rolling. This is going to be awesome. We're in New Zealand, in the Polynesian Islands. And uh, we have got an incredible race for you this afternoon. Some of the world's best down here. 
near some of uh, the riders that have been down already this afternoon, starting with the former, the reigning, excuse me, Queen of Crankworks, Caroline Buchanan. Oh yeah, the conditions, this is the first time we've seen the track today in race conditions. It looks sloppy out there, but Caroline's come down in a great run, considering she likes it dry. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was it was interesting. I got to talk to Martha actually on the on the way up on one of the shuttles, and she was saying that that she's loving it, riding a little bit more downhill, kind of the free rider that we know. I mean, we know that Crankworks is like that. Even Georgia Astor, she's loving riding free ride, pump track, jewel, and now getting out on the downhill bike again. And this that's is what Crankworks is about. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely, I'm still finding my way through it, but enjoying massively the festival feel of it. But Georgia Astor leading at the moment then with that 4.10, sometime outside the fastest qualifier we had yesterday, that 4.02 with Lewis Ferguson. And these are the riders we're going to be looking at this afternoon. Lewis Ferguson will be the last to drop. Ellie Smith the first. Watch out for Jess Blewett, the New Zealand national champion. Vinnie Armstrong, Jenna Hastings, and as I said, well, the adopted Brit, I'm going to say, Lewis Ferguson, the Highlander from Fort William in Scotland, now living down in Queenstown. Gonna be the woman to be, I think, Trace. I mean, she chose the right place to live. Didn't she leave in Scotland for the Southern Hemisphere? I believe she came before COVID and then couldn't go home and then actually has never left. And I can't blame her because this is probably, like, this is absolutely one of the greatest places I've ever been. I've had three days of the greatest mountain bike riding in the forest and it's been, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing place. No, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to follow her, she's my hero. <laughs> And there it is up in the forest. It is a lot dry. So I was actually speaking to your brother, here, Mick, a moment ago, arms. and I said, you know, it's You're pretty slippery up there. And he said, yeah, it's still not as dry as you think. You've got to be careful, but you can definitely push. And then he, I said, he, he went into like a trance-like state, and I said about the dirt and said, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. <laughs> he did, honestly. Yeah, I don't know. He's gotten a bit weird about dirt lately. <laughs> Is it an old man thing that you like the nutrients? And I don't know, Rob. You let me know. No, but just look at it. He said that it is surprisingly slippery yeah. at times. You yeah. ride down and you're having a great old time and then it just takes you out from underneath you. Your tires slip on the yeah. boots. And... Okay, let's go to the top then. Ellie Smith, first rider from Gillaby, 22 years old, riding for Common Cell. Pretty flat in the top section. Got to carry speed up here, Tracy. It's actually a very physical track, especially in Don't these conditions. Don't have to tell conditions. me about that. <laughs> you had your e-bike, though. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, with no chain, it didn't really help. The conditions make it tough, and then you can see if you don't quite get the speed to go over the jumps, you have to take that B-line, which ends up turning into a little bit of an uphill into a ruddy off-canvas section. You'll see it coming up. Yeah. And it is quite hard. Not as hard as it was yesterday and the day before, though, the the pumice, the volcanic ground is soaking up an unbelievable amount of water. And she is carrying good speed through there, actually. I mean, she's only one minute 50 into the track, and you can see how physical yeah. that section was. And then straight into this deep rut, which it looks like it's not even dried out at all since Friday, has it? Not much, but it is incredibly humid here. I mean, it is a subtropical rainforest, I believe. I know you're from the tropics, Trey, so you can correct me on that if I'm wrong. Yeah, Tracy, is this, does this remind you of being back home? I'm um, honestly not so much, but I... Not enough nasty <laughs> creatures in the woods. <laughs> no snakes, yeah, I like no to spiders. Look for spiders and snakes, but <laughs> the conditions here are like, it has that really dark black redwood mud that comes yeah, from hey. this unbelievable forest, but it just takes days and days to dry out. Yeah. Even then, like you said, it's so humid in there. Look how dark it is. Yeah, in there. that's right. To thoroughly dry out at but least. She's getting through it well. She's keeping, I mean, the goal would definitely be to keep your feet clipped in to be able to stay out of out of those big holes and in the ruts to get you down to the good line. Absolutely. George Russell, as we say, leading. Bailey Goldstone, second at the moment. Queen, defending Queen of Crankworks, Caroline Buchanan, third. She's going to be looking to take some points towards that overall. King and Queen of Crankworks. But Smith coming in this steep section. Good pace down there. Some big, big holes. Yeah, you can take that outside line, but there's so many roots at the bottom of there. People are actually taking the, the rough line, which is kind of counterintuitive. So 312 to split through there, some way behind it. 
I mean, I imagine at this point, Elliot, you are quite fatigued, so wherever your bike takes you, you don't want to make too many battles that you can't fight with We, were, uh, we were laughing at Rob, but like, you know, <laughs> but, La but, but Loris, I talked to Loris, and he was like, dude, I am deep, like halfway yeah. down this track, yeah, you're just pumping and pedaling. I mean, from experience, I did do a few practice runs on Friday, and gosh, I only did two practice runs, but it was so physical. I must say the conditions were much, much worse on the first day of practice, but it is really, you did really come here to race, right, Trace? Physical. <laughs> ah, <Yeah. I'm laughs> you were thinking about it. <laughs> there she is, 9.9 .9 back for Ellie Smith then. And she's gone fastest. Look at that incredible run. Wow. And she looks strong all the way to the bottom. I mean, and that's that's the fastest time we've seen from yep. the women so far. That's the fastest time of the weekend so far. You're dead right there. Two seconds quicker I than I mean, she Louise was Ferguson's. clean. It looks messy. The track is messy, but stick into the line, like foot out. Clearly, she got her clip back in, letting the brace go. We've seen her in that steep section. The goal is really to let your bike go in conditions like these. And you're kind of hoping for the best, but at the same time, if you can hang on and you've got the fitness for it. Look at the forks working, bottoming out Ooh, yeah. off these big <laughs> drops. Oh, that's so, I mean, like Seesaw. you were saying, Tracy, I think that is going to be the key. I, I was kind of walking the track and looking at some of the lines, and it feels to me like it's a balanced track. Like, all of these ruts, the, the uh, roots like that, as soon as you get off-camber roots, you're really having to work the bike, move around, see those yeah. hips moving. It's it's super, super technical. And I mean, that's the perfect example. She just went down that section so so consistent, so strong, and she just headed for the straightest direction. Taking the wide line wide there, there's line. a couple of lines inside as well. Oh, good argument for carrying more speed around the outside on that, that turn there towards the bottom. So <laughs> Ellie Smith leads by a massive margin, nearly 10 seconds, a great run then for that woman there. Back to the top we go. And it's Kalani Muirhead from Queenstown, just 19 years old. Dry and dusty Queenstown. This will be a little bit different to what she's used to. Right in for Pivot, New Zealand. Yeah, you're right about that. She did say that the track was getting a bit drier today and probably a bit more comfortable <laughs> coming from dry and dusty Queenstown. And Hitting the big jump. jumps, yeah, though. I was about to say that as well. Little tag on that one there. And they're huge jumps, and the biggest one was the one she's just taken the beeline for now, but that one is just huge, and some of the boys weren't even doing it on Friday, the it's, first day. It's <laughs> 18 metres. I mean, it is huge. Yeah, it's, 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 a, huge. it's a nearly a 60-foot jump. Yeah, it's yeah, massive. massive. Especially when you've got a few mud ruts coming into it. And she's it. up by 0. 0.7 then. So it's a good run from you ahead. Yeah, that inside just developed. Kind of heard people talking about it in practice. It was really hard to stay up there until today. So like you were saying, Tracy, this is the first time we get to see the track that's dried out. And for everyone else at home that's like, oh yeah, it looks really muddy. You should have seen it the last two days. Mm. Yeah, I absolutely. actually didn't think we'd have a race two days ago. <laughs> I, you know, like, I think if we'd been in Europe and that much rain had come down, you might have been in trouble. Yeah. It was unreal. Monsoon, is it monsoon season? Monsoon. Monsoon season. Yeah, I mean, season. I know we have a monsoon. I don't <laughs> yeah. know about here, but I, I it's right. rain like we get at home. So I'm kind of like, you've got to keep the rainforest yeah. green somehow. It's very green and it's absolutely stunning. And the work in forest it is actually a lot of it. Hey, okay, well, like I haven't seen her take a foot off yet. Brilliant. It's super, super good. That's the way to ride it if you can. Look to be off the brakes down there as well. Yeah, missing those big rut holes at the bottom. You've got to squeeze just to the left of them there. Now we'll know, coming into this steep drop section, Ali was very fast coming in yeah. there. Well, that was Kalani aggressive, though. like it was very aggressive. And you're going to carry that speed out all the way down through these jumps now. So crucial, crucial to exit there. 1.3 up there, no, that split. So the advantage all hers at the moment then. Muirhead looking like she should go fastest. Yeah, super smooth the whole way. Just making it, I feel like she's making it look way easier than it actually is. Don't have to tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it was a lot wetter yesterday. Nor I me. saw it. You don't have to, you don't have to remind me. On that inside line there. Yeah. The berm there does look like it'll hold you up a little more than that outside. 
Yeah, she looked fast. Interestingly, you can side. enter it on the inside, and the massive ruts are actually what hold you. It's that slight right at the bottom, and she went around the drop, but if you want to take the drop, you really do need to have that good entry into it from the far left. Gotcha. Oh, around the last jump then, Muir ahead. Coming to the line, it's going to be close. She's outside by just over a second. Muir ahead then in a second place, just ahead of Georgia Astle. Yeah, interesting. Ali went for the jump. She didn't clear it, but she could have saved that a little bit of time just trying to take the the last jump there. And so this is that jump section. It's this first one. You really have to kind of push down, land right at the top, take a bunch of cranks. It's a bit of a case pad, so she didn't quite make it over. You can see her pop this last little step down. Such a fun section. And coming into this section again, like you said earlier, Rob, just watching those forks work. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> Good testing session, isn't it? Yeah. You do probably want to have you. your suspension pumped up for the big holes and ruts that come with mud like this. It reminds me like a little bit like the top section at Lord. You know, the bike, everyone's saying just how hard it is to set a bike up that's seesawing like that, yeah. front to back. Even a little bit of Leo gang in I this imagine, little section. Yeah, yeah, and I imagine this whole track's this it's so diverse. There's fast bits, right. flat bits, tree roots, big holes, rut. I mean, it's quite a difficult track, I would think, to set the suspension up for especially as it's changed over the last couple of days. Yeah, I mean, I think we talked to so many riders who were thought that for sure it would be spikes or yeah. something like that, and we're, we're kind of seeing people on drives now. At the start of the week, you would have run. I didn't crash on live stream this time. That's what I care about. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Yeah, and it world, world champs. Yeah. You were in live stream? Yeah, and I crashed. She was like, okay, and then had a huge... Okay, six riders left to go. <laughs> And this woman from Belgium, Seal van der Velden. 4.25 in qualifying, 6.4. Uh, don't worry about those times, though. It's a very, very different racetrack today. Strong out of the start gate. Yeah. Those long legs are quite powerful. And deep Looks over like that first jump. So oh. Man, they, they're pedaling so hard, but you can just see how much that mud and that wet ground drags you when you go into that jump. Looking like a strong rider pedaling along that hard, flat section. Yeah, and people the, saying just how physical that is, right? Oh, yeah. Well, you, well, I oh, can't look say at you know. Sorry, 9.7 up for her then. A massive run. I mean, you could see it when she pedaled out of that start yeah. gate with the strength she had. Crunching gears, yeah, you're right. Nearly like 10 the seconds up, though. Tracks. But look how much these times are going to come down. That's how much faster this track is than it was. And I think it's having the confidence to, to know that the track has changed in that way where you really can let it go and, and push a little bit more than you could yesterday yeah. and on Friday at first practice. And that will be the key today is letting the bike go after losing a bit of confidence in the mud and the wet, being able to let the bike go today knowing that, you know, it's actually gotten a lot drier, a lot grippier. But as, yeah, as you say, it's, it's, it, it's really hard when you've been slip sliding around just to find that confidence just like that. Yeah, and like Elliot said, they've gone from full muds to cut muds yeah. to today. It's only today that they've actually changed, right, Elliot, to dry tyres. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think this, this track, too, because it's, you have these kind of flat sections where you're pumping a lot, it's oh. really important to carry speed. Lost she's the definitely front pushing. Yeah. She is lost the front coming now. Looks Look. like she got her foot straight back in. Her, I would like to see the replay of that, but her setup looks very firm compared to the other girls. She didn't dip down in the fork as much as the other girls did in that really steep step section, which is pretty a really good, um, important setup for today to yeah. have that speed on the bike, especially in the flat and those steep hole sections. Maybe that's partly why she was 10 seconds up at that split further up the track. Quite possibly. <laughs> yeah, it was a big gap. Into the tree stops now. Middle line for her. And cuts the second turn out as well. Yeah, that really nice. yeah. It's got to be quicker, hasn't it? Yeah. It's a long way around that stump. Yeah, and I think going through the middle of that and then just directly taking that stump. You don't want to waste any time spending any extra time on any other lines. And the directest way to that stump is probably the quickest way, as we know. Sends the big finish line double. Here she comes in. She's going to go fast. This Van der Velden leads now 3.47. A massive 13.1 into the green. Great run. New leader. Ellie Smith down a second. Kalani Muir ahead third. Astelin third. Bailey Goldstone fifth at the moment. 
Amazing just, time. Yeah, and five, only five riders and left at the You can see top. she was pushing. She had that little slide out with her front wheel. And this is but why we want pushing hard, the, the pedals, like the feet on the pedals, because you get that, that speed right out of the turns. Yeah, and this is where she had a little slip up. But then you can see the fog as she drops down. It is, she's got her suspension nice and firm, which holds you up out of the holes. And even on the flats, it gives you like more pedal power along yeah. those tough flat sections. Strong rider. That was a very strong ride from Seal. Amazing she should be run, very yeah. happy with that one. And the time coming down, 3.47 now. Fastest qualifier. Oh, look how deep the holes are. <laughs> it's so physical, isn't it? It and is. And come out of that section to pedal into the jumps. And also, look at the tree roots in there, and they're mm. still wet. And I watched and you'd take them out yesterday, right and, and honestly, so many riders crashed just on the exit there. Oh, so many riders come down with dirt just all over yep. them yesterday, didn't they? Yeah. And even think... this morning as well. I was going to say that. I don't think anyone that I've seen has come through clean. Mm -hmm. So Belgium leading in the Southern yeah. Hemisphere. I kissed everything before. It looked OK. I was like, nah. We still have quite a few heavy hitters to go in this Back to the top we go. Shania Rawson from Rotorua here, former New Zealand national champion. This will be interesting. Did you see the size of the bike she's racing? I didn't spot it. Trace, what is it? So I like, think oh, it's it an might be her, bike. yeah, trail yeah. bike. Or has she gone for the e-bike like you? <laughs> I'm not sure they're legal yet in normal competition, <laughs> but I'm pushing for it. I mean, this will be great on the flat sections, but probably wow. quite hard in some of that technical downhilly stuff. I would have thought so, yeah. These are the parts of the track where she will have an advantage. We just lost time in for a moment there. But you're right, look fast along there. Surely it's got to be harder, though, in these sections, less traction. It must be. And even the weight of the downhill bike, you kind of want to keep you heading in the right, like staying in that rut and heading in the yeah. right direction in the steep, slippery sections. But it's clean so far. Yeah, it's a great run so far. So good. Carrying good speed down there, despite being on that short travel bike. She's making it look like she's on a downhill bike. It's like it's not even technical for her. It'll be interesting coming into that steep step section. And took the silver medal at the World Championships in Cairns a few years ago, maybe in the juniors. She's very good at pump track, dual slalom, things like that. I think she has a BMX background and she's She'll be one to watch at the pump track this week as well. And I think she's another rider that's crossing over, you know, getting some points in the downhill. Yeah. And her focus, her main focus, I believe, will be in the pump track. Well, that's right, a whole week of events coming up. All the usual favourites from Crankworx World Tour. If you haven't been to one, it really is uh, an incredible experience. You can come and ride in the mornings, watch the events in the evening. You can even have a ride in the afternoons if you want. I think me and Elliot are actually going to race at a dual slalom. We've, we've kind of said we're going to race a dual slalom this year. I'm ready. That's going to be my world championship. You know, yeah, me to, too. Just so you know, to race, you have to qualify for oh, the do race. do you? Yeah. That, Sorry, guys. Right, that's it. Yeah, okay. We're out. <laughs> Dream's over. Thank goodness. Fast down there, right around the outside. Good pace. Us being for Bruce, they know how Still no time. We can't tell you exactly what she's doing, but we haven't seen her make, do anything wrong, make any mistakes. Clean me up over that big step up. No, it just looks... Very slippery on this little bike. You can yeah. see a lot more how slippery it is just having that short travel bike. You can tell that the corners are a little bit more sketchy, but rough. It's it going to be a rough ride right down. <laughs> well, nothing on the timing screen, so I can't tell you. We'll figure it out. Okay, well, we work out the times. Let's have a look then at the current leaders' run. Val CL Valde Valde, that 3.47, and a great run it was. Yeah, I mean, just look at her from the start. Such a strong pedal from the start. And, you know, this flat section at the top really sets you up for your whole run, so... Big case on And then path. she cased it, just as I said that. <laughs> <laughs> you can thank her afterwards. We've got the I racing mean, drone live all the way down that long straight. 
She let the bike go, hit that last jump, which is pretty tough in those conditions and being physically tired by the end of it. Well, not many riders are. Not many riders no, are tackling that right. big finish yeah. line jump. No, you're right. So top. Oh, and look at that then. So Shania Rawson with that run on the trail by incredibly. She's taken the lead at 3.45, one and a half seconds up. That's unreal. Well, it's funny though, as the riders go, it feels like the slower is almost faster. Like she just looked perfect. Yeah. All the ruts, feet were up, just pumping. Really, really nice. Yeah, that's such a good point. Like the smoother you are, the more your feet stay on, the less you kind of lose your bike from underneath you. They're coming down in the faster times by a lot. Yeah, and it's one of the things that we don't think about a lot, but if your tire's on the edge of the ruts, if you're kind of turning your front tire into them, it's actually slowing you down. So some of these yeah, riders. Not the end of, yeah, excuse me. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, I, it's just funny that that's the kind of stuff that they're thinking of if I can stay right in the middle of the rut. The New Zealand national champion from Queenstown, just 20 years old, on two World Cup podiums in 2022. Jess Blewett then, a woman that will push for the win here this afternoon. Well, you followed her down, Rob. What did you think of <laughs> her I got, I got to that side the now, and she was, she was longer. Gone. Yeah, but look at her over these jumps. An she went to the with the massive jumps. Well, she didn't even case it. No, and is she going to go for the big one? Yes! And over it cleanly, a little case on there, but that's going to save her some time. That's massive. Save her. 18 massive. meters, 60 feet through the air. And going around that is actually a slight uphill, so that would have saved her massive time. Yeah. And it's even bring her into this ruddy section a lot faster with a lot more speed than if you were to go around that beeline. Also, what you don't see on the TV is it's very off camber and slightly uphill to get into the rut. So doing that jump will save her a lot of time. The first woman to take part at Red Bull Hardline last year. I was just going to say that, Rob. Yeah. I feel like she's all good with it. Yeah, with the jumps, no problem, huh? <laughs> Two broken yeah. collarbones last year as well. Yeah. Still performing at the highest level at World Cup racing. Still see it slippery down there, the front pushing a bit. First, uh, big fan in the trees there. <laughs> he had a big voice on him, that little lad. Feels good when you, you hear, as a rider, you hear everything go quiet, and then you'll hear something like that, and you're like, right, OK, I should, I should go. Refocus. That's right, I'm racing. <laughs> I mean, I find Jess one of the most resilient riders on the circuit at this time, and still so young, but yep. You know, breaking her leg and breaking her collarbones and still coming back and doing hard line and just always sending it, never, you know, never holding back, she never is giving up. Yeah. yeah, all those injuries. She's had a lot of injuries so far, but they make no difference to oh. her whatsoever. On the, uh, so smooth in that. On the step what are we on, calling step it? Off. A whoop section? No, not really. Supercross section. A what? Step on, step off. Step on. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Get with it, Tracy. <laughs> step on. Step. Well, she's very smooth in the step on, step off section. All right, which line here? Right around the outside, then. Best line to put you into the into that drop on the exit, taking that full outside line. I find. 3:45 to beat. Just blew it, looking like she's going to smash that. Oh, hard around that left. Here she comes then. New fast this time, it's Jess Blewett who leads it. 9.7 up at 3.35, a great run that was. 9.7 up on Shania Rawson. We didn't see any mistakes there, that's going to be hard to beat. Yeah, I mean, that was a huge run was. from Jess. Uh, like, I won't say nine seconds, but a big chunk of that time will be that she sent that massive You're right jump, there. which Absolutely. we're going to see a replay right now. Smooth over the first two and then big she pull. didn't even pedal into it, just tucked in that massive pull and got her over it. She's so confident at jumping. I know, I mean, she's so steezy. Oh and goodness. look at the strength on her. She oh. just lets the bike ride. She's choosing where she wants that front wheel to go, but the back she doesn't even mind. And that's how you got to ride a muddy track like this is steer with your front and the back has to follow. Yep. Beautifully down there. Yeah, the head's not even moving. Full control down there and just letting it go. She even cut a little high across those roots coming around that right-handed too, which will save a little bit of time. And then let it run right around the outside here. 
mean, to me, he looked like a real long way round, but I'm not riding. But, <laughs> but it, you know, a lot of, I think a lot of the men actually going around the outside as well in the last practice. The inside line's more favourable earlier in the week. So there's your top five at the moment. The national champion of New Zealand leading. By 2.92, excuse me, a mistake on our uh, timing screen here. Okay, three to go now. Vinnie Armstrong, the next to leave the top from Keenstown. Just 24 years old, this woman. I mean, you've never seen someone with more jumping skill than Vinny. I mean, and she's so, so skilled, able to come out here and hang with these World Cup racers as well. And we may actually see her at Red Bull Hardline this year. The women well, got you the opportunity to come and ride there. Look at yeah, this. Yeah, it's so style. clean over it. It's, it's insane. You watch her kind of in the, in like Fork Road or in Winyard Jump Park in Queenstown. It's just insane. Yeah, and then to come to this full-on technical steep real downhill course and just show us that she can qualify third after spending most of her time doing free ride. It's, she's got so many skills on her bike. For sure, and she'll, she'll be running flats as well. And so like, as soon as you take a foot off in, in the mud, you can't really get back on. Your feet are going to be sliding all over the place. So That's probably cost us some time though. Getting a bit twisted, cross right on that straight there. She's really at the forefront right of the free ride, the women's free ride movement at the moment. We saw that through those jumps. Didn't tackle the big 60 footer though. Oh, big crash. Wow. She's okay. Chains off. Oh, no. Oh, that's unlucky for coming into those flat sections. Oh, no. I mean, now we're just seeing, we're reminded of, like, as Michael said, when you ride it, you get confident, you ride it fast, and then all of a sudden, out from under you goes your bike. Yeah. It still is extremely slippery yeah. and greasy out there. And it showed just in her run then where she crashed, just straight out from under it. And, and here's our replay. Oh, yep. right at the top. Oh, bang. right when you come into that section, there's kind of it looks like it's just dirt, but there's a spider web of roots right at the top of that section. <laughs> uh, she found them. <laughs> no spiders, just the spider web. <laughs> yeah, that's at the next stop in Cairns in a few weeks' time. <laughs> spiders will play their part. Just hopefully she got that chain on because we've got the on-off section, oh, Elliot. Yep, yep, correct. And, oh, no, she doesn't need a chain, does she? Look at yeah, her. She's, she's so doesn't. smooth in the jump. I get nervous when the chain's flapping around below the bike, to be honest. I don't know about you. <laughs> I like it. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't, you run a chain, what a loser. <laughs> Still making all the jumps look quite easy, even without that chain. But, I mean, that's just her skills on the bike, aren't they? Yep. And the no gloves. I wonder if she took a handful of dirt in her, in her palm. I know, that's, uh, you guys don't do that in Australia as much, huh? The no uh, gloves. I mean, I wear no gloves when I'm away, but... In the tropics. Can you imagine not, how sweaty yeah. your hands are? In Cairns, oh it's not possible, yeah. You're you too have, sweaty. You it's not possible anywhere. I don't, no, it's... <laughs> I don't like gloves that much. No. A, you get too much arm pump with gloves. I mean, we wear gloves. Yeah. Telling you, Elliot. <laughs> Sorry, I okay. told you, mate. Right. So with that crash, Vinnie Armstrong goes in the sixth place, 31 seconds back. No chain as well. That's still a stylish run. Yep. I give her a 10 out of 10 for that. We will indeed. And, st and still some points for the uh, for the World Tour. Two to go then. Jenna Hastings from here in Rotorua, 18 years old, the junior world champion, and looking like she's up for this. Let's go back to 2021. And it also was muddy. It dried out for race day in 2021, but it was a muddy week, and she was still a junior racing in this race. So it was curious to see her take the win in front of all the girls that are actually here today. She took the win over there last on that Skyline track, actually. Second here on the Tanif Fan track, Tanif Far track, excuse me, last year.
Oh, that's a that's a special moment, isn't it? Yeah, you that's work, what it means. I mean, she's been riding for so long, and you think about that. You think about sitting right in that chair, thinking about like, oh, and I was here, the fastest in your person. hometown. Yeah, amazing. Right, the goggles are on. Let's see what she can do then. Riding for pivot, second fastest qualifier, second at the nationals, the New Zealand nationals. To Jess Blewett. I know she wanted to get this jump. Heard her say that she was trying to keep it, keep it on the down low. That way, have something up her sleeve for the finals. Followed her brother into it. Oh my goodness me! Rides the nose out of that. that I thought she was going to wind the windows down and get out. That was unbelievable. I think she might have bumped her nose on her stem then. That looked Holy harsh. Holy Toledo! But she did it. And well. uh, I mean, that's what Jen is like. Honestly, that jump is what Jen is like. She is so hilarious on the circuit. A bit wild and rides like a bit of a wild girl. And that's amazing that she did that jump. Good goal to achieve. <laughs> so that 335 at Jess Blewett could be under threat here. Hastings taking that big jump as well. We know it's faster. I mean, she's flying down this section where we saw Vinny come a little unstuck in those that gully of roots, uh, ruts, excuse me. You just try to choose one and you get sent into the other, am I right? Well, I mean, it's funny too because you have to do that, almost die, and then take a deep <laughs> breath and say, okay, I'm going to continue to take just as much risk and uh, try to win this race. Yeah, I mean, after that huge jump, she will be huffing and puffing inside the helmet, I imagine. <laughs> She had a long time up there to think about that. I think that that's what separates these, you know, these women from the rest of us. Is she'll just be like, yeah, that's normal, no worries. <laughs> yeah. I'm down. Grabbing a bit of back break in there. Still carrying good speed out though. Yeah, she's probably still got that jump on her mind, but she's still letting the bike go, and she's smooth and immaculate on her run. Yeah, absolutely. Timing her through the warp section perfectly as well. She's making the warps look easy, the on-off, excuse me, look easy. Curious to know what line she takes in here. That outside is very popular with the top women today, isn't it? Yeah. Less complicated, I think. I think it gives you a little bit more speed for this long pedal section. It's true. If you can carry it all the way down, it'll add up on the clock. Yeah, absolutely. I stood there for quite a while earlier today, and Whoever took that outside line really did have a lot of speed coming out over that drop. Here comes the middle Jen. was fast, though. Oh, she goes second. Sorry, Tracy, 6.4 no. back. Go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we felt the same. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I think that frightened her. Absolutely. Let's go back and have a look at that huge jump that she went for. You said she followed her brother into it. Earlier. Yeah, and so the reason this happens is when you're riding a downhill bike, you have to compress the suspension. She would have compressed just a little bit early. Oh. And so when it's uncompressing, it kind of kicks her up. We've all um, had that long, moment. We have. We the have longer all. you're in the air, the bigger the jump. Yeah, yeah, Actually, yeah, yeah. the impressive thing is saving something like that because not everyone can save, and usually it's a yeah, big OTB totally. that ends up on Friday fails or something uh. like that. So saving <laughs> that is very impressive, and good job, Jenna. That's amazing. amazing. Yeah, and, and ride down, finish her run. Podium finish after sending that jump. It's well worth it, Absolutely. I imagine. <laughs> yeah, she'll be... Getting ready for the rest of the uh, for the world tour. This definitely sets her up <laughs> for. Uh... Okay, well we're going to hear from her now. Let's go down to Jenna. Well, hello Jenna. Well Hi. done for surviving that near death oh, experience. Yeah. How are you doing? Uh, brown pants, that's for sure. <laughs> More info than we might have needed, but yeah. that was a big moment and fair play for uh, for getting over it. I mean, it's a huge jump, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I did it like all good in practice and then my second practice run, case a little bit. That one, I was like, I think I'm going fast enough and just got bucked and I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did much the same sort of thing in the commentary box here. Yeah, like I've had some dead sailors, but I, that was like a, milli, like a millimetre further forward and I would have been on the ground. Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> We're going to go back to the top now. The fastest qualifier then, Louise Ferguson, now on track. Can she deny the win? 
to Jess Blewett, the last rider that can do it. I mean, Louise is on a new team this year and she's got a new fire in her belly. You can tell that she's been working really hard. But, I mean, we're not seeing her yet, which is a bit curious. No, we'll that's right. Wait a second. So, has Louise Ferguson had a problem or not? Oh, a little she's bit long very coming. dirty. She's, unless that's a sponsor on her top right shoulder, that looks like a bit of uh, yeah. dust. And, yeah, she's yeah, got dirt on the all butt. over her. So looking oh like right, Louise Ferguson has been down mm -hmm. then this afternoon. Yeah, and I mean, like we've said over and over, the track is like a sniper. You could be having a great run, and then all of a sudden you're just on the ground. And many riders that I spoke to earlier said that, you know, it feels good, the track's good, but it's still not dry. So you're not riding a dry race today. Oh, and there you can see the back just kicking out there. But she, I mean, Louise General, she's such a strong rider and she's been, you can tell that she's been working really hard and super stoked on her new Continental New right. Team yeah. factory ride, which is always good to see, you know, top women getting great rides to go into the World Cup season with. On that World Cup podium in Lea Gang last year, fourth place for her there. Actually, one here last year on the Skyline track, winning by over 20 seconds in the mud. In catastrophic <laughs> condition Cat was it? Yeah. Year. Yeah. But yep. Looking like she's had a crash on this run today. Yeah, definitely these... had a crash today. Look at the mud oh. all over her there. Yeah, you can see it <laughs> for sure. <laughs> she definitely started off a little bit cleaner than that. I was talking to her about that ride and I think as you go to, as soon as you get onto a factory team from being a privateer, you know, she's traveling around in a van, you have to get used to not doing everything yourself. You come in with a dirty bike and stuff like that. You have to be like, ah, I have somebody that is going to wash this up. My, my only job is to race my bike and, and concentrate on, on going faster. So, But it's easier. It's much better for her once you adjust. As you for say, sure. it is an adjustment. It is. And it's going to be really amazing to see what she can now do, you know, with the team behind her this year. For sure. I think it's going to be, uh, it's going to be amazing because she was already, to do that as a privateer, like the results that she had last year and even coming into this year is super, super impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, as, as a fully sponsored rider, you have so much more time to put into training, put into recovery, put into, you know, you have more time to even train during the season because when you're a privateer, all you're thinking about is how am I getting to the next race? And when you're on a factory team. Oh. Riding that last double. That's a scary moment. So Louise Ferguson crosses the line. And it's going to be Jess Blewett that wins the race here then. In Cragworks, Rotorua, Jess Blewett, the New Zealand national champion, takes the win. Oh, and Louise will be absolutely gutted about that crash as well. Yeah, she After will, right? But first. As we all know, Trace, it's racing. You push in these finals runs. It's I think like, we understand that part, Rob. I think, I think so, don't you? <laughs> but it is, it's gnarly, the one-run format of downhill racing. So let's have a look back at that winning run then. Yeah, and I mean, what a great run it was from the start to the finish. She let the she let the bike go. She let it loose in the technical sections where you needed. She cleared all the jumps smooth. She's just flying down that hill, wasn't she? Yeah, man, you can see how aggressive she is. Yeah, I guess after qualifying yesterday, she knew that she had to find a little bit more in the tank and just let that bike roll a little bit faster. But yeah, she's going to be dangerous this year. <laughs> oh, yeah, Tani Seagrave, I spoke to her in Queenstown the other day and she said Jess is scary fast. Congratulations, Jess. News at National Champions a few weeks ago now winning. Your first, was that your first Crankworks win? I think it is, right? Uh, my first Crankworks win was about three years ago in 2020 when Good. I actually raced uh, not against Tracy, but I was in juniors and she was an elite. So. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh my, right, that's a bit awkward. <laughs> a good run though, eh? you had a good run, you set in the big double, how was that? Uh, it was good actually. Um, the run, like my last practice run, I caught the headwind and like case and I was like, oh, this is going to be sketchy. But yeah, got over it, I was pretty happy. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Jess, uh, Elliot here. I saw that you rode with Rob. Is that kind of what gave uh -oh. you the uh, inspiration to win? It's kind of <laughs> hearing him talk to you about lines. 
Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, oh. Yeah, Rob and I had some a pretty good time filming that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I definitely couldn't stop laughing, but yeah, thanks. Um, I'm not Rob. sure I handed you the winning formula <laughs> in that um, run. Maybe. <laughs> uh, I just have a question, Tracy here. Um, your run was really amazing. How were the track conditions? Because we watched your run and you just let the bike go. It looked like you were steering with your front wheel and then letting the back go. It was like really impressive to see. Uh, it was, yeah, track's like so much different to yesterday. Um, way drier. There's still like some slick spots, but yeah, the best thing was just to like hold up, not touch your brakes and let it go. Let your bike go where you want it to, or just where it goes. Um, I found was the best kind of situation, but yeah, I was happy and happy that track dried up a bit. I bet. But awesome. it, yeah, it can still catch you out. Well, we're going to let you go and we'll enjoy your win, Jess. Thanks very much for joining us. Congratulations again. And, uh, we'll see you in a bit. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> and now are the results. So it was a good winning margin in the end. Six and a half seconds back to Jenna Hastings. Shania Rawson there in third. New Zealanders On packing out the top bag. three. Look at that. Yeah, that's incredible. Van der Vallen all the way from Belgium. Stopping pretty much an NZ whitewash of this this afternoon. Look at that. Yeah, she put a bit of a blocker there, but I mean, it's not NZ. That's actually an Australia flag. That's right. Ali Smith, the Australian. So, oh, oh, easy, boy. Tiger. I'll get my coat. I'll get my jacket. I'm sorry. Off you go. <laughs> I'm supposed to see you in Cairns, then. Man. You will. You'll see me there. Right. I'm going to. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to talk my way out of this one. You look at this. We'll see you in a few moments. It's always a struggle out here. There's a big crowd. You've thought about this kind of whole life. The bike events everyone talks about. I'm going for podium for sure. It's more than just watching any championships. No! Let's go! Oh, he stops it! Oh my gosh! <laughs> it's about progression, style, spirit, and community. I don't know if I have to go as fast as I can or if I have to look like I'm fast. And fast is fun. Here we go, we're off. An incredible ride. Whoa, mother That was a good one. Bike on Red Bull TV. I'm Matt Jones, I'm a professional freestyle mountain bike rider and I'm attempting three world's first tricks that have never been done on a mountain bike. And I'm tackling this project with my twin brother Jono. It's going to be a journey. No points at all for that. Are you going to hit me if I stand here? No. Matt Jones, Design and Conquer, now available on Red Bull TV. Step aside for the ultimate urban downhill race series. Look at this! The world's best riders. Look at the pace of him now! The narrowest streets. Oh! The gnarliest runs. Honestly, really physical one minute. Red Bull Cerro Abajo Race Series. Yeah! March 25th, live on Red Bull TV. Well, Jess Blue, the national champion, did it here in Rotorua. A perfect run from what we saw of it. Yeah, and like she said, the track has changed a lot from yesterday, which surprised me. I knew it changed from first practice, but she said you really have to let that bike go today and be confident with the new conditions, which she clearly was very confident yeah. today. I thought too, you know, we saw a bunch of riders kind of doing using that technique, slow to go fast, but Jess, kind of showed us that you can ride this track aggressively. She definitely did, yeah. And look at that winning margin. Six and a half seconds up over the junior world champion.
So a good day's work for the national champion. But interesting, isn't it? Do you think the riders are really struggling to deal with the changing conditions a bit from earlier today, like you just said about it? But it seems like the track's still drying, but still slick. Yeah, I mean, honestly, Friday, it was a completely different track. It was torrential rain out there, completely different track. And then a little bit of practice yesterday where it was kind of between the drying track and the wet track. So it was still quite wet. And then today, you know, it's going to be changing all afternoon in this heat. You can feel how hot it is. And yeah. I think it's going to be a big challenge, especially in the men's race, having that track change so much. What tires everyone running, do you think? Is that still a, a talking point? Yeah, I, I think everyone changed the drives this morning. There is a there's a certain limit as a rider where you say, yeah, it might be sketchy, but it's faster, so I just have to do it. I think Jenna Hastings is going to be happy enough with a second place today. And, you know, one of the other things... We're probably happy with survival. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there's, the, there's all the tires that we think most of the riders will be running this afternoon. And so those drives are kind of the uh, DHR2, the Asagai. High rollers, you're definitely going to be running on, you know, super dusty. The shorty is kind of what we would call a mid-tire. Yeah. So it used to be the old cut spikes. So that yeah. was what a lot of people were running yesterday in practice. But... Went and saw, you know, Nico Mullally. He's running the DHR2s now. And, uh, yeah, those drives. Get Absolutely. On. Well, someone who might be able to tell us a little bit more is Nico Mullally. Here he is with the Maxis Bike Check. Hey, I'm Nico Mullally. We're out here at the Crankworks Tanifa Downhill. I'm going to talk you through a little bit about my Maxis tire setup for the weekend. This is my Frameworks Racing prototype downhill bike. This is the custom bike that I designed and had built for me. It's a horse link four bar suspension system, but it's my variation of it and it's designed for racing. One of the cool things about this project was I was able to choose all the component sponsors that I want to work with. And my go-to for tires is always Maxxis. So I'm running the shorties front and rear this weekend. First two days of practice were super muddy here. So these tires are kind of an intermediate mud tire, an open tread pattern that sheds mud really well, but also has a shorter depth tread pattern that is better on roots and rocks. It's more consistent across different surfaces. We'll see if it dries up a lot by race time. May switch to dry tires, DHR2s. This dirt is just like pine needle loam. It's awesome dirt, it's gonna be really fun to ride in and. That softer soil allows the tire knobs to bite in a little more. When the conditions are like that, you can push harder. A fun feeling when your bike's gripping and you can really rip. Right, thank you very much, Nico Melali, who is having, I think, a fantastic time developing that bike. Huh? Incredible to see what he's doing. So now it's time for the men's race, right? And we have got some real world class talent here let's start with a five time the reigning world champion Louis Bruni a man who can I think I mean it was so amazing to watch him in practice because like I said this track is kind of a, a balanced track and he rides the bikes elbows out kind of knees out lets it move lets it do what he wants to do so this track I mean he's been good here He's won so many times in this in this red road dirt. Um, he pushed quite hard by you, I believe, yeah, eh? in that's 2015 right. yeah, yeah, that's or something. True. But you're uh -huh. right. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, is it true that the roots actually move off the track when they hear him? Yeah, back? that's what I heard. They I grow heard out of the way. That's what's yeah. been happening. Uh -huh. it, the precision of him. That's the thing with Bruni. It's very, very hard to see exactly how fast he's going. Sam Blenkinsop, you know, second fastest qualifier. There they are, the last two to drop today. He said to me, I said, I said, what do you reckon, mate? And he said. Ah, Bruni's not so good in the off-season. I might have something for him. He's on that new Crestline bike as well. He's all he's all fired up, yeah. Blanky. We know how well he goes here in New Zealand. Yeah, he's and he's won on this track specifically so many times. Local, Lewis Hamilton. Dad having a, a big hand in making this race happen, developing the track. Uh, you know, him and his brother Connor. Just so good to the locals anytime you want to come to And I believe, around. right, Lewis Hamilton, his career started here in 2006 when he was the course sweep at the World <laughs> Championships. Yeah, the one that Sam Hill no won, right? Were so, you there? No, I just quit, actually. Right I just uh -huh, finished uh -huh. my career, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. But, so yeah. everyone enjoyed himself. Everyone having a great time now at the back there. But, you know, this men's race, we've got Bernard Kerr in there as well. I mean, BK Sport, I actually had to uh, give him his new helmet. <laughs> ah, I heard about that. Yeah, 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 the old BK Sport. I'm glad uh, I'm glad you were able to do that. Yeah, yeah but he's going to push as well today. Well, I, I, I saw, I, I kind of watched his helmet cams throughout the week. And in qualifying, 
He actually had a really good run, but made two really big mistakes. He was only three seconds off, I think, of the win. So he's going to be really dangerous this week. Yeah, yeah. OK, well, we're going to be back with the men's break. After this, Tracy, we're going to say goodbye to you. Now, I am going to go away and study flags. What's the difference between the Aussie and the New Zealand one? Ours has got white stars and a fifth star for the sun. Right. <laughs> Brilliant. Glad, glad to clear that up. Thank OK, you. everyone, thank you very much, Tracy. We'll be back with a men's race right after this. See you in a few moments' time. Pump up your tires for the bike content on Red Bull TV. And check out the best live events, feature films, and shows. Download the Red Bull TV app for free. And sign in to watch all of our content offline. Download the app now. Look at the time from Stevie Smith. He takes his first ever World Cup win. The making of a legend. Stevie Smith, a.k.a. The Chainsaw. He was a bit unpredictable, he was creative, he was wild. He did have a great life, full of giggles and laughs and adrenaline. The untold story of a true champion. Long live Chainsaw. Now available on Red Bull TV. Really awesomely fun. If you want to get to the top. You have to dig deep. Pull the dirt down, shovel the dirt over, pull some more dirt down. Bingo, bango, bongo. A story of dedication, teamwork, and friendship. Steps to the top. Now available on Red Bull TV. Welcome back to Rotorua in New Zealand, the first stop of the 2023 Crackworks World Tour. We just had the women's race, and if you just joined us, it's time for the men to go racing for the first time this year. We've got an amazing track here, some of the biggest names in the sport, and some amazing fans. It's a party out there, right, oh, Elliot? Of course. We got a uh, big bass here. The king of Crankworks, Reigning defending. king. I, I talked to him, he said his run was pretty good. You know, he's one of those guys, wow. like, just look at, he's so oh. talented. Always think about him on, you know, the, the A-line races, the, the slalom, the pump track, can do pretty much anything. So he's going to be one of the people that is actually able to do everything and go for the overall. But it's Lewis Hamilton from here in the Rotorua, the fastest time so far with a 3.07, leading things out. Yeah, I mean, this a couple is of his, years. his home track. Feels good, you know. Just had a start. A start a family recently. Him yep. and his his wife Ash are out here racing, which is just amazing. And winning as recently as 2021 on the Skyline track. So that's a good time by Hammond at 3:07. Bruni, uh, 3:14 was fastest qualifier yesterday. So look at that, seven seconds off. This is going to be lit up this afternoon. And there is the riders we're going to be looking at. We got Nico. Toby Meek has been kind of lighting the world on fire. Won all those races down in Queenstown. The newly almost, crowned NZ national champion, right? Yeah, almost took it to uh, Jackson and uh, Laurie Greenland over Whoa. there at Coronet Peak, which was uh, amazing. Yep, that's right. It's going to be Jewett. interesting to watch. Oliver Zwa from Australia. Phil Atwill's here. George Brannigan. Mick Hanna, a true legend of mountain bike downhill. Before we go to the last three, Vergier, Kerr. Oh no, excuse me, Vergier, and then we go to the last two, Blenke and Bruni. These guys. Funny too, they they were old teammates. I know uh, I know Sam wants to beat Loic actually. He's I, desperate, yeah. Yeah, I, I he knows think... he might be able to do yeah, it, for you know? Sure, for sure. There's Ash, the daughter. So here we go then. The first man to drop then in this live final, Kai Ahern. 21 years old. You know, it's, Kai's, Kai's got on this uh, on this UR team. He's ridden out here in, in Crankworks a whole lot. I think what we're looking for is really just how much speed people are carrying. You can kind of see now people aren't even actually pedaling for a lot of these first jumps. This is where it starts to get technical. Whoa. 
Tags up on the top of there. It's hard because it's been so wet. You don't actually know how hard you have to pull, and the lower you keep it, the more speed you're going to carry. Beautifully through that rut there. The rut's getting deep here. Remember, they are still slick. You can see the bike sliding around here and there a little bit. Yeah, this is the, the couch section. It was actually outrageous in practice. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. It was cross rut, cross rut central. You, you watch people come down. There's no one that keeps a, a foot on the pedal. Junior world champion in 2019, this man. It's interesting watching the track develop because you saw Kai there. There's one line that is kind of outside, outside. You get to hit those ruts, and then there's another line that we'll see people take on the inside where you kind of go over the lump. It's kind of a decision, again, of cutting off time versus uh, the speed that you would carry to that next section. To the, uh, just outside the top 10, Monson and last year with that 12th place. Fast down through there. Not the most direct line, but perhaps the less risky. If you try to cut those routes, you can end up in a little bit of bother. It's so funny here because it is, you're always thinking about the next section. So that section is actually not super important. The speed you carry out of there, though, is, is crazy important because yeah. it's from out of the trees. That speed is goes to right here. Yeah, exactly. The first next time you get on the brakes inside there and with amazing pace from yeah, there. Yeah. It's drying out. And so that was why in the women's we saw so many people taking the outside because with the speed that you can carry there, you saw Kai really have to use a lot of technique to keep the uh, keep his bike in, in check. But that 307 of Lewis Hammonds goes wayward. He's four seconds up. Kai Hearn takes the lead at Prangworks Rotorua. 303.2 now. So the track running faster and faster, it looks like, this afternoon. It will only dry, though, with these riders coming down it. Ah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's so crazy because you've never ridden it in this way. No. And so that's what I was saying over these jumps, right? Normally, in practice, everyone was pedaling, shifting up, pedaling yeah. down that, pumping as hard as they could and pulling up. And now you saw Kai not even having to take a pedal. This is that outside, outside I was talking about. It's a little bit hung up there just because the dirt is so soft. Yeah. Looks like you can just lay into the rut, but it's actually a, a mud pit. Yeah, it won't quite hold you. This incredible soil here. Actually, are you ready for it, Elliot? Okay. Uh -huh. A volcano oh, erupted no, here in okay. 1886 okay. and it's fired out these pumice, these crystals. That was it. Oh, so it was just 1886. Is that when New Zealand kind of got its start? <laughs> no, that's when the volcano <laughs> over there okay. erupted and gave us this wonderful okay. dirt. Okay, got you. Yeah, you're going to have to do better than that right. to catch me out. Okay. Okay, no <laughs> let's go back to the top. And it's going to be Nico Malali, Jackson Fru, not starting. All the way from the USA. On the bike, he builds himself. Yeah. Carbon fiber back end on her for the first time, I believe. Yeah, and he, he tests everything out. You know, he, he was, he thought it was really important for him to be able to come to these races. He does so many things, runs a bike park, does everything. And he was kind of the talk of the town in practice because he was the first one to do this root gap onto this off camber. No way. Yeah, it's, uh, he was like, you know what? I'm going to go for it. Play some mind games with people a little bit. And he goes well, it seems, in the Southern Hemisphere. A third, actually, at the World Cup in Cairns a little while well, ago now. You know you know what? He got a third there, and he actually crashed. That's right. Yeah. 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 He was unbelievable when he just came out of juniors. Yeah, right? for sure. And then also another podium with no chain. That's right. Yes, Hoffield. where was that? In Happy uh -huh. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, totally. You're right. So this is that inside line. Oh, he does the double. Oh. Anyone was going to do that. Wow. I saw that. So that if you don't make that, it's actually a log. So if you were to catch your back tire on it, you will s crash 100%. It looked pretty big from where I was sat. I told Wait you there. he was doing the gaps. I told you he was doing the gaps. Malali is the man. Him and his brother Logan out here. Logan's his mechanic, does a lot of video stuff, have a whole series. This is the outside line. Oh. Look how fast he went through there as well. And now that it's dried out a little bit, so everyone's taking the gully just because that exit was a lot better. But you can actually kind of hop out to that outside. So, again, another gap. And uh, yeah, you get it more direct. Beautiful through the uh, whoop section as well. Nico feeling it. He's looking good so far, yeah. Which line's he going to take? Looks like in that middle line this time. And tight out, oh. catches the fence hard. The uh, 
the post hard, didn't slow him down. As long as your tires are on the outside of it. All good. To Malali. Carrying great pace down this bottom section now. A 303.2 to beat. It's going to be close, you know. Here comes Nico Malali. And he takes the lead by two seconds. Nice oh, 301.2. Fantastic. It must be an amazing feeling to do that on a bike you have built and designed. We were laughing about it because there's no excuse. You can't say, yeah, bike wasn't working right. Oh, yeah, I guess uh, my fault. So look at this. Oh! Jumps, lands, goes up high. That's one of the great things about this track is there's so many lines. You can go all the way left to right. We're going to see him hop out of this rut to this outside. I haven't really seen too many people do this. You have to hop over those roots. You can be as creative as you totally. like up there. There is so much choice. And it really sets you up better for that whole next section. Yep. Interesting. There's a couple of good lines down there as well. Sweet. Oh, you, you found him? Well done, Nico. <laughs> I like that. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do. Yeah. Nice. Good run. Great run. So the qualifying time being absolutely smashed from yesterday. And there right. it is. Box suspension, got the drives. Okay, 16 riders to go. And it's the Z New Zealand national champion, just 18 years old from Queenstown, a man who had the beating of Loris Berger at a summer series race down in Queenstown a few weeks ago. Let's see what he can do because they have put everything into these two boys. Him and his brother over the few last few years, his dad actually building them. 20 inch wheeled carbon fiber downhill bikes. Oh, oh beautiful through there. Oh, just perfect. Yeah. Little tag, but that's okay. Pulls hard, little case on the top of there and riding for the MS Mondrika team. And so I think, you know, you might see some riders kind of pedaling up there. You heard Tracy say that it's a little bit uphill, so you probably want to take some really hard cranks after that big jump. Yeah. I think you need to. I mean, riders not really getting over it cleanly, are they? No, no. Oh, jumping into there. Fast down there now. Look at this. So you, fast. You can go oh, as fast as you want down there. Yeah. There's, no, there's nothing to stop you. Is he going to pull up for no. it? So that's the, that's the normal line. The Mulali gap, <laughs> it's forever known. But it's quicker to gap it. I think so, doubt, yeah, right? I mean, as long as you can... You've got to get the turn. Yeah, yeah, as long as you can stay in there. I think Nico went a little bit high, but... Could stand you up, yeah. Yeah. But Toby Meek really pushing on down here today. Yeah, and he's got that style where he doesn't... Oh, 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 oh. 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 Straight down the middle on the most blown out line down there. I was just about was to insane. say, he has that style where he doesn't look like he's you know, pushing super hard, but it's moments like that where you're like, ah, he's going insanely fast. That was quick, yeah. Brother Rory out with injury at the moment. But yeah, what time did he gain in that section? Because he came in there fast and he yeah. left there fast as well. For sure. And you can just tell how much corner speed he has. Yeah. It's not it's not about, you know, how fast you go down these gnarly sections. It's about how fast you go in and out of these corners. You pedal oh. strokes. Oh, yep. Lost a bit of traction in that turn there. 301 a bit. He's not going to do it. Malali holds on. He goes third. 2.6 into the red. Oh. But that was insane to watch him come into that section. Yeah. The bike was all over the place. Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, there's just a couple sections that maybe he could have taken a couple little cranks on. This is that section. Let's see what happens. Looks like his, his front end's getting a little bit low. This is why you go to the gym. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna slides out just a little bit. Wow. You look at the compression there. Yeah, that's... Uh, he did well to hold that. That's like doing a push-up with, like, Whoa. you know, 150 pounds on your back. And then and he was just like, yeah, no worries. Now I'm perfectly back online. But those roots yeah, there the roots. can catch you. Yeah. Into, <laughs> into third behind yeah. Kai. That's yeah. right. Nico Malali leading at 301. Kai Hearn second at the moment. Toby Meek third. Lewis Hamilton fourth and Jackson Connolly from Australia, fifth place at the moment. Those first four, really in a league of their own. 
Oh, Ollie Davis on the union team. Well, let's see what this man can do then. Pushing some gears straight out of the gate as well. Yeah, this track actually has more shifting than, than most tracks. So you, you come and now you're punching up a ton of gears. You really need to be in a high gear. You can hurt him just, just get a gear there. And then as soon as you land off of this big jump, you have to be shifting down a ton because you need to get pedal strokes up that little uphill. And then after that, everything is just one or two little strokes out of the turns. <laughs> Cleaned it nicely He's up. all good. He's all good. Now things are going to get steep as he turns left here. Oh, I know you like a nice rut into there. Yeah, yeah, that you can take as much speed as you want. Oh, he spent a bunch of time in, in Morrissey and in that. This kind of bottom section is just like the bottom of the Pliny. It's so, <laughs> it's so insane. You know, muddy, muddy. Moving down there. <laughs> oh, Pushing the front there, still slippery. Yeah, there is that log. He actually hit his front tire on that log I was talking about. So Nico was able to actually jump over it. But yeah. that inside seems to be the line. We'll see if anyone else takes that outside. Good pedal there. On the pedals, hard across there. Yeah, I know he's been working hard. Team manager Walker Shaw. Everyone's saying just how physical this track is. Yeah, you wouldn't really think about it, no. but oh. it is. You're pumping, and you have to concentrate. Oh, 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 whoa, oh, whoa, whoa. I love that section. Right up against the stump. There he was. Yeah, when, you, when you see these pros go down sections like that, they kind of just bounce oh, down. Yeah. You know, it's not a, really about, you know, finding, oh, I'm going to put my tires exactly here. You kind of just say, I'm just going to go as fast as I can. Hold on. Uh, make sure my bike is working. And um, yeah, go through it. Oh, there's that inside that yeah. Tracy's talking about. Over the two yeah, stumps? Really nice. Yeah. I mean, it's Even so much shorter, funny. right? Yeah, I was going to say that. You can imagine how much longer the outside is. And so when, we, when you do see people take it, it might look fast, but just imagine how much more uh, distance they're having to cover. So you have to be that fast. Here he comes in, down to the line. Davis goes into fifth place, some seven and a half. Seconds adrift to the fastest time. Let's have a look. Back at his run here, then. This is those, those jumps. So Case coming in a little, a little yeah. And you want to tuck, right? The reason you see him not pedaling is because there is kind of a threshold to where you don't actually want to pedal because you, you're catching all of this wind. Uh, so that's why you're be like, oh, why don't you take a pedal? Well, they're right on that edge between yeah. it being faster to tuck it's and not worth the pedal. It. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But look at this. this Beautiful for it. Look at actually that. Actually gets out into the outside, so able to make a landing out of the the gully, which is super cool. Allows them to do that double, and then this is that inside that we're seeing. So cutting off so much time, and then turning back. Oh yeah. Not quite as fast of exit speed. Even though it looks good, what we're really thinking about there is you have that whole flat section. So yeah, that's, that's why people right. are kind of taking that outside. To because, carry that speed yeah, yeah. all the way down to the finish line, really. For sure. OK, well, from Marietta in California then, Colt Sutos now. 14th in qualifying. And yeah, he's really been kind of on fire. Rides with uh, you know, Charlie Harrison and all the, uh, the California boys down there. Good to see him over there, here in NZ then. Squash is beautifully up onto there. Quick pedal, stroking, tucking though, Elliot. Yeah, really, really nice through there. And I mean, that the landing is a little bit flat, so you, you kind of hear the, the, the tires hitting, and that's, that's OK. Yeah. Getting the inside, kind of main line. You saw him, he came out of there, and he kind of jabbed the brakes right before he came out. That's why he had to take those little pedal strokes there. But it's the line choice is coming down a little bit because, you know, the, the racing line, certain sections of this track, there is going to, there's going to be one line that is drier. For sure. And I think that the, it is, like I was saying, it's kind of a balance track. So the reason you come out of a turn, you get a little bit out of, off of balance, you know, the, the tires catch the side of the rut, jab the brakes, and then that's kind of, uh, yeah. that's where you lose the time. Good hard is, pedal strokes yeah, in man, there, I was yeah. Just about to say, I'm glad I'm not him. <laughs> yeah, he'll be breathing in that <laughs> helmet. 
coming down through the forest. This forest uh, still a working forest. Big areas of it though, redwoods and native subtropical rainforest as well. Oh. It's left untouched, quick down through there. Yeah, that was so good. They were telling me that this forest actually grows twice as fast as a normal forest. That's right. The last time I was here, there was, the trees were like, you know, shoulder high. Yeah, that's right. It's a 25 year cycle. Apparently these, these, tri these pines grow twice as quickly as they do anywhere else in the world. For the people who put the building, the, the tracks in the forest though, it means that they have a 25 year cycle where the, where the trees go, they go in, put in new trails, then the new trees grow that's around. Awesome. It's amazing, yeah. So there's always part of the forest being worked on. And that was that outside that we saw. Oh. Oh. See if he's able to carry some speed. Actually going low in these berms. It's a good time. It's not going to threaten the fastest time of the day, but it is good enough to see him go into fifth place. 7.2 back. Carried great speed, I would say, down to the line on that last section. For sure. And yeah, Miko, Miko. Look at that, Mulali. <laughs> huh? Up top. There he is. Let's see what he did. We were talking about that in the women's Jeff showed us that you can ride this track aggressively. Nico's been doing a lot of work in the off season. Good training in. Here's that gap. Yeah. That was, yeah, that was fast. <laughs> that's so gnarly. Gnar that's what they call him, gnarly mulali. There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But you know, like, look at the time oh. he made with it. Hitting that tap manual there. Able to get the end. Pedaling all the way through the line. Great to see that flare still there for Nico Malali. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay, let's go back to the top then for Jacob Dewitt now from Canada, riding for Pivot Factory Racing. Only 12 riders left to go after this one. Yeah, switched over from that Canyon Collective team to uh, the Pivot Factory team with, with Bernard and Jenna Hastings. I think it was the first person we've seen jump and triple out of the woods there. Look big enough to yeah. me. <laughs> Holy Toledo. Quiet guy, but he, he worked super hard. Spent a bunch of time in Queenstown with Bernard. And, you know, I was talking to the mechanic, Barney, and he said, yeah, oh, making it look easy. He said that he was on pace. You can always tell if you're on pace because at the beginning of the season, everyone goes to Queenstown. Yeah. Loic's down there, Loris down there, Burner's down there, Eddie, everyone. It's the scene. Yeah. It's the scene, yeah. Here's the couch section. Straightening it out, hopping in. Still slippery. You can definitely see yeah. the bikes washing a little bit down there. Oh. And you really just, you're picking points. You're saying, okay, there's a rep that's going to hold me. I'll dive into that. Going outside. The gnarly Mulali didn't do it. And you can tell, <laughs> yeah, the gnarly. You, you can tell how much you have to break there because if you, it's it's such a big compression and you can't halfway jump it. You can't frame case it because of that log I was yeah, talking about. Yeah, 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 you're gonna end up in trouble. I mean, it says something that Nico's the only guy to do it so yeah, far. Yeah, for sure. That says a lot. Gnarly Mulali. That's how big it is. Yeah. He's got himself a new name out of it. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's that last section. Oh, down for those big compressions on that main line down there. And I think it's, you know, it's drying out. We talked about this is going to be so much different because the last time they rode the track was maybe three or four hours ago. Yeah. So you had a bunch of bikes on it. It's always the interesting thing for me with downhill, especially on a track like this, is the ruts you were taking are different. You know, there's been hundreds of bikes on the track, hours of sun. Pass down through the middle line there. Good time light as well. Good pedal strokes in there. He's got some energy left in the tank. Yeah, he's a fit dude. Inside. These these last berms are so slippery. Are they? Yeah, they're pack. super, super slippery. Do it. Goes into fifth. 6.2 back. That'll be a big change from here. We've had a couple of riders with big changes. Fox suspension now. This is that, just making it look so good. Why not? I always think it's nice when you have tracks with jumps on it because it gives you a little bit of time to get you back in the flow. Take a breath. And I mentioned that we saw a couple, I don't remember who it was, but kind of dragged the brake there and have to pedal out and see if 
Jacob didn't have to pedal there, and that's kind of what we're looking for. Sometimes, sometimes pedaling can be good and give you speed, and sometimes it shows you that there was just a mistake. Yeah, and yeah, so that's right. trying to get back up to speed. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it always blew me away racing downhill. Just, and it's very physical to do it, really, but just how much time you can make by pumping a bike right. as well. Yeah, for sure. But, you know, I used to do that instead of pedaling. Oh, I'm not yeah. sure it actually and, uh, was I less think, physical. Yeah, I heard that <laughs> you were saying that you used to kind of come out of the gate and just sit down. Was uh, that... If yeah. I didn't like the trick... <laughs> yeah. no, anyway, let's move on. <laughs> Remy Meyer Smith. New signing for the Giant Factory off-road team. First year elite, this man. Yeah, right. His chains oh, off, his no. chains off out of the gate. And on this track, uh, that's not going to help, is it? Yeah, and you... You, oh. Oh. you have to go so hard out of the gate. Oh, that's going to be such a bummer. Ah, oh, took the... He's going, is he still going for these big jumps? Took the silver medal in the juniors last year in Leger. Expect big things on this year. Oh. He's done it! Fair play! Yeah. Wow! And I'm interested to see what he looks like coming around here because once you lose yeah, the chain, you know you have to let off the brakes. Yeah, you've got to commit. You've got to just go for it. Yeah, and you can see, look at the speed he's carrying out of there. Pumping everywhere. There's a couple of sections on this track that you have to pedal, but you can still definitely be competitive. Oh, look at that! He's oh, there, he's down here. <laughs> so, Mar Smith trying to make up for the chain, dropping right out of the gate, remember? Wow. And it, it, also, if his chain actually... Oh, 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 it goes down! Send the gap! That would have winded him, I should think. A big... Oh, he hit the ground hard. Yeah. Are you OK, bro? And one of the things I was going to say is, once you have a, if the chain actually breaks, if it's totally off, the bike actually ends up working better because better, you don't right? have that. That actually kind of gives you some confidence, and you're like, oh man, he's okay. Good. He's back to his, almost back to his feet. Well, it, he's just going to slowly roll down here now. Yeah, and that's one of those times where you're just like, really, like chain breaks. I yeah, crash, one of those, like, right? Like, like, I'll just <laughs> let's just go to the next race. Push it hard. Perhaps, Come perhaps right. coming. You know, yeah, he's probably been sending that gap right, but maybe well, a little I bit mean, different. Well, I mean, I don't. I think it's interesting because, and there it is, right? Like you said, right, right out of the gate. And you're like, come on. Uh, <laughs> well, the, I don't think um, it's one of those things where you would have known oh, in yeah. practice. You would have known that that's possible, that gap, but you wouldn't have done it because it's been too wet. And so you're like, this is the first time that I'm sure that's the first time that Nico's done it. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. Because I... it was it was too wet. And so that is oh. kind of, we used to see Sam Hill doing stuff like that all the time where you go into the race but Sam would save it on purpose. Yeah, yeah right, yeah, they right. come out and win yeah, by 20 totally. seconds. Yeah, right, right. But it is, it's crazy. Like, you're thinking about these alternate lines and you stuff See Remy like that. taking it easier yeah, further yeah, yeah. down after really hitting the ground hard up there. I don't know. If, did you ever have, I had a couple races where I had like a big crash up top and then you kind of get that going. You're like, all right, I don't want to give up. And I had, remember at Andorra when you had a huge crash oh, yeah. to the finish. You have yeah. two and you're just like, yeah, I just shouldn't be here. Yeah, yeah it's, yeah. You've gone on, yeah, I know exactly that. It's so annoying to <laughs> blow a race run, isn't it? Yeah. And you still, in your head, you still, somehow, even if you've been on the ground 20 seconds, sort of kid yourself, yeah. you might salvage yeah, something. Right. Well, I think that that's the interesting thing about downhill, you yeah. travel, all the way across the world and you know the pressure mentality to be to be able to put it into one run is is unique to this sport well good to see remy ma smith then across the bottom across the uh, finish line at the bottom there's a mess with that chain his brother brother took luke actually just becoming the aussie national champion james mcdermott now 11th in qualifying for this fella and one of the reasons why his chain might have gone is we hear the shifting. And so as a rider, you, you have to pedal as hard as you can and shift. Yeah, you have to just trust, right. trust your, your equipment in that. Oh, baby. everything's fully stressed out. Everyone from New Zealand and Australia has like insane style. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty. Oh. <laughs> Did you say that, Elliot? Yeah, it's pretty. You uh, see him up over there like that. We get into the technical section here. And it is just so much about just waiting for the right moments. And these riders have been practicing all week. The conditions! Oh my goodness me! What is that? Huh? What was that? Imagine.
imagine coming up to that and just saying, I'm just going to pull. Let's see if he does the... Oh, baby. That was really nice, though. Yeah, it was fast. You can see, I think everyone's kind of going to that inside because when you go to the outside, not only is it is it soft, but you almost have to go uphill. Yeah. Out of the way. But the temptation, of course, is to try and let the bike roll. Yeah, let yeah. Let it run. Oh. So, yeah, I am surprised he took his foot out there. That was pushing hard well, in that turn. The track is, is so wide. If it was dry, you could cut so many of these turns a lot tighter. And so you're seeing riders start to say, OK, I can cut some distance off here. I can cut some distance off there. But it's still slippery. Yeah. Definitely really slippery up in that wood still. For sure. In spots, that's Getting for sure. Triple. Yeah, tripping it out. Look at this guy. He's got some air miles yeah, on this right, runner. Yeah, right. <laughs> Beautiful to watch. Gold status. Right around the outside then. And like we were saying, like you can see, visually see the speed, but you have to have that much speed because you're covering so much distance. Remember we used to kind of even sometimes like measure different lines on track walk and stuff like that. Yeah, it's yeah, it's mad, isn't it? Yeah. McDermott across the line then, nine seconds back. He goes into eighth place. Well, OK, as we just see that man come across the line, we're going to catch up with Loris Vergier. He's going to tell us a little bit about setting up suspension. Painting a masterpiece is just like riding a bike. With every stroke of the brush, with every splash of paint, with every root, with every compression of the fork. The paintbrush is a tool for creativity as the bike is for... Yo, Loris, what are you doing? We gotta set up the bike now. Magnifique. As uh, Loris is really busy today, I'm gonna show you all four steps to set up suspension on a race weekend. Step one, during track walk, we analyze average speed, no. steepness, and ground composition. Once you have done that, you need to find the right balance between your rear suspension and your front suspension. After that, it's all about fine tuning during the race weekend. As Loris goes faster and faster and faster each run, we are about to narrow down all the settings. That brings us to our last step. Right before the race run, we're gonna do our final and last adjustment. And that's how we set up our suspension for a race day. Our first steps. <coughs> the French have got so much flair. Well, here we go then. Here's your 10 riders left here in the finals. At Crankworks, stop one here in Rotorua, New Zealand. To Huto Ariki Penn, he's from this town. Loris Bergier, one of the very fastest in the world. George Brannigan, an absolute legend of New Zealand downhill. Sam Blenkinsop, you could call him the same as well. Going up against his old rival, Louis Bruni, the last two to drop. And it's Nico Malali leading at the moment with an incredible run. We've got to say, the only man to successfully send the gap in the middle of this track. Oh, man. You know, and, and that's one of those ones where I'm wondering when people hear that he has done that, they'll be like, really? Like, I didn't even think about it. <laughs> cool, calm, and collected he is. OK, back to Maywald now. At 10th in qualifying for him. Canyon Talk. Collective, Lusty Industries, this man riding for them. Yeah, I, I talked to Baxter and I said, you, you know, how was, how was practice? And he was like, this is just the track. Like, it's just the track of tracks. That's so what good. the people are saying. Yeah. The track is incredible. Mm -hmm. And it's an incredible set and it's in as well. Super tall rider as well. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> oh, yeah. What are you saying? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's he going to make of these big jumps then? Cleanly up over them. Should have a good run at this big 60-footer. 18-meter jump coming his way right now. Ooh, nice. Perfect. Yeah, he's, he's a super talented rider. Really good on the jumps. And it feels so good as a rider when you just land perfectly. Had to sit down and get clipped back in Yeah, there. you could hear yeah. the clunk click. 
still mud flying up off yeah. the tyres in that section, actually. Have to take some really nice breaths after that jump section, kind of reset. I remember Greg, Greg Minard talking about, you know, kind of chopping up the track in different sections. The puzzle. Yes. Putting it all together. <laughs> For sure. That man's done more puzzling than anyone else in downhill ever. <laughs> right? It's, it's true. It's true. Every never fails. Back to getting some good, good pedals through here. Yep. Just so smooth. You don't really hear, hear his bike working, all of that stuff. Just hitting his lines. Getting yeah. on the inside of that, of that turn. Looks to be carrying good speed down oh. here. He comes into this steep section now. Oh. Full commitment through there. Oh, that is quick down That's through a, there so, because it's so steep right oh, there. For sure. I mean, and it's one of those sections where, oh, cutting inside off inside. The turn, yeah. yeah. It's one of those sections where, you know, the whole track is really smooth, calm, collected. And that section is one of those sections kind of Reminds me of a, a World Cup track where you have all these steps and things where you see it's faster to be aggressive. Yep, and he was definitely aggressive into that long right-hander there as well. A little bit out into the mud. But he's well outside the time of Malali. It's already gone by for Baxter Maywell. Oh. Comfortable in the, in the turn, just letting the back in slide where he needs it to. Big gaps on the timing screen, though. That's still going to be good enough for him to go to 12th place. Nine riders left to go here then in Rotorua. I think I was looking at the timing well, screen. I nice saw uh, Alan it. Cook. Uh, that's a problem. But that's how humid it is up there. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for Even sure. Even at those speeds to be steaming up. It's mad. It's true. It's true. This is that section actually getting this double. Getting his tires back on the ground, letting his bike work, letting those long legs work. Spotting the exit. Everything goes to where you're looking for it. Let's see what happened here. He came in really hot. Yeah, pop. yeah, for sure. Well, you want to, and again, that's kind of, you want to come in super fast, but really what matters is the exit because it's your speed for that whole next section. Top three. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Oliver's Zwa now. From Fallon in Sweden, actually a dual passport. Australian as well, this fella. I mean, and he had this incredible year last year. Didn't he? A breakout so year. Good. This is a man on the up, right? Yeah. That and amazing I... eighth place that he got in Andorra. Yeah, and he uh, switched over to the Canyon Collective yeah. FMD team. He was telling me that the only thing that is the same on his bike is the pedals. Still running Frank Brothers. No <laughs> yeah. But he got, it, it was, it's really nice because they gave him his bike super early. Got it at the end of last year, so he's had a bunch of time on it. Just so smooth. Look at that. Yeah. That was seamless through there. And he's so good at carrying speed. It's just, he's making it look easy. He, is he it really look easy. is making it look easy. Yeah. You can see he's carrying good pace down here. Definitely. Look at that. All good. Let it go. Yeah. This is fast. Yeah. It, it's smooth, but I'm going to say it's fast. There's, there's little moments where you can tell it's yeah. like, oh my goodness. When the bike goes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Taking that outside. Yeah. On the pedals early out of that turn. I won't do him any harm down this straight. A little bit. As soon as you get out of the rut, is if you get off a line here, kind of like a you know an F1 race, the quickest line is actually just the main line. You don't want to be, there's bits and pieces where you can be creative, but it's kind of main line with confidence is Eddie Massey going there. Into the steep seat comes Ooh. now then. He's offline, but he kept it hard wide I'm open. You, you just go for it. Like, wow. That's one of those sections where you just have to go for it. Amazing, isn't it? Just to see these top riders in yeah. action, you know? And, and it really shows you the confidence that they have in their bikes <laughs> to be able to just say, yeah, it's OK if I want to push into this section. Fine. Yeah. Six inches offline, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but right, I right. can't stop. There's tree roots and stumps everywhere. It's not about Inside. being precise. It's that just about cool. going fast. Yeah, I think that that is, if you can do it, it's kind of the perfect balance between distance and speed. To me, it looks faster. 3.01, that Malali time to be, it's gonna be standing up that time. And Nico's, it's going to be close. Zvade coming down to the line. Is it going to be green or is it going to be red? Oh. He goes fastest. Point five nine up. Oliver Zvade, new leader at Crackworks Rotorua. Oh, we knew it was good. We
we knew it was good, and that was without the gap in the middle of the track that Malali did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's, that's good for Ollie. That's, that's good for Nico. I mean, both of them, right? Like, this is kind of the first real race. This is the first real race of the season. Yeah. You've been training super hard. Now, I wonder if he was trying to get to that inside. He's able to get, get some pedals through there. And this is that section getting out of the rut early. Oh, I love that. Just comfortable with the two-wheel drift. Jumping out to get a little bit of backside. Boom. And then you can see him actually spotting. I don't know if he was offline as much as Not able to get out to that outside so that it wasn't quite as rough. If you can ride the edges of oh, a goalie, it's going to be that. smoother, but it's just gnarly. That was precision actually there at the bottom. For sure. Mad. And look at his hips there, right here, just able to let the bike go out. <laughs> I'd be happy with that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like properly fast. I like came into it. Like front wheel like, in a rut. Yeah. I'm like, I can't break. <laughs> that is <laughs> I, I can't break. Right, fit that wheel then from the UK. Now a resident actually of Greece where he lives. And a busy man. So we have an action in uh, Seto Abahu, Red Bull Seto Abahu series in Colombia a few weeks ago. Catch the finals next Sunday. Next Saturday or Sunday actually from Guanajuato of that series. But Atwill is one of the most skilled people on a mountain bike on us. Oh, for sure. He's incredible. Feel the thrill. Feel the thrill. Velocity, Atwill. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is one of those guys who can just turn it on. Little bit... Uh, Might have stalled there. A little bit of a stall, but it's okay. He was on the pedals pretty yeah, quick yeah, out yeah. of it. Get some power back going. I think he'll... Uh, able to just yeah. launch off of there, yeah. slap his front tire down, not really care too much. He's good in the mud. Yeah, of course he is. He's from England. <laughs> the 12th in Leger last year, his best World Cup finish. Really nice. Actually, got a podium back in 2017. He got a podium. Yeah. I remember that because he told everyone in the pit. <laughs> yeah, he was going around. I mean, I would too, good grief, <laughs> making the rounds. Why not? Why not? Right around the outside there. Whoa. Yeah. Super fast down that long straight. And just comfortable with his bike doing whatever it needs to do. Different line there. Yeah. That was really good. That was. Comes in. But he's always one of the most creative. Yeah, always sure. slightly off the main racing line. If there's an option, he'll take it. Oh, the drone getting close to him. Look at this shot. Amazing. I know. Up that it just so good. And it's so, like, look at him landing on manual. Yeah. To do that on a downhill bike is, is that pretty, speed yeah. in a race run, yep. Mad skill from Atwill again. Right round the outside, he comes in. It's actually interesting because you almost saw him do the same thing as Baxter did, where the outside, the, the entry is getting a little bit beaten up. And so it's getting harder and harder to carry the speed that you need to to make that line viable. He's not going to touch the sign of Zouar then. Phil Atwill comes down the line. It's been a good run. Good enough to see him go in fifth place. Four and a half back. Wow. Zouar's had a great run there, oh, you yeah, know. Yeah, for sure. I mean, man, I'm. Good job, bro. Got a bit Fuck you, boy. Fuck you, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Making the oh, propane work down there today. Making it work. Yep. This is that mistake, so just trying to get up high, but just overshooting the rut a little bit, and then having to drop out. That used to be the line to go low there, but the high is a lot drier, able to stay up there, kind of gives you a lot more speed down into the rest of it. This is that launch in the couch section. Uh, feels good. Feels good, man. A good run for Phil Atwood. There's your leader. How long will he stay there? 
Here we go, George Brannigan now then. NS Bikes for this man, hometown Queenstown, 30 years old. An absolute legend yeah. of New Zealand downhill. Oh yeah, for sure. Another insanely skilled rider, some injuries along the way. A broken collarbone last year at Red Bull Hardline for him. Yeah, and he was telling me the last couple of months he's just had Triples a... Triples out, massive out! So good, and you know, he's, he's had this kind of immune Yo, system really messing with them, so he's had to rest. He wasn't even really able to get off the couch in the last couple of months. It's only been in the last couple of weeks that he's been able to train and ride. So I know he'll be he'll be happy to just get out here, get his feet wet, and I think he's just gonna build throughout the whole throughout the whole season, throughout the whole world tour. He will, absolutely, within half a second of winning a World Cup a few years ago, this man. Fast down there. Ah. Yeah, boy! Straight on the main line, straight through the middle. Yeah, able to get these get these lines. Talk about gaps. He, him, and Queenstown, he pioneered so many different gaps. If there was somebody that was gonna do any of these gaps, it would be it would be George. Yeah, you're right. I remember we used to just say, like, George, like, you don't you don't have to, you know? Like you don't have to do these gaps that are just ridiculous. No. <laughs> No, no one's, no one's watching. No one's counting. <laughs> the weird thing is, he's like the most mild man. Yes, totally, <laughs> so. totally. Yeah, you see him, but you see him like you see him ride, and he's a totally different human being. That's right. Yeah, exactly. An entirely different human being. Here he comes into the sneak section. Then got the music out. Oh, good through there. 6.7 back boat split two. Two and a half back already, the first split on track. So he won't be threatening those top... He won't be setting in those top five, I doubt, really, at the moment. Yeah, and Swar, I think... Mulally, Ahern, excuse me, Kai Ahern, Toby Meek, Phil Atwell. And I think he'll just be, like I said, happy to get a race run under his belt. Happy to be just out here being able to ride, because I know, you know, that kind of sickness, that illness really, really took it out of him, so. Happy to really just see him out here, of course, in the berms. Wild. Oh. Last double then for George Brannigan. Goes into eighth place. Lost a little bit of time down the bottom as well. Yeah, this, there's time to be had everywhere on this track. I think most of the time you kind of see yeah. tracks and there is one <gasps> section, but here. Look how physical it is. Yeah. Look yeah, how much these sure. guys are hurting at the bottom. And it's, you know, you would say, ah, it's like a shorter track. It's There, there is pedaling, but. Well, let's go and have a look at that. Oliver, Oliver Zwa leading at the moment. This is some of his run. I mean, and Ollie is just one of the fittest guys ever. Is he there? Is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, he trains. He's super disciplined. Such New a, team as well. Yeah, Good such a racer. The season, huh? Did a couple of team camps uh, in February over in Europe with the, with the FMD team. Talked to his mechanic and said everything's getting on so well. There's that section where he said, when he said he didn't want to break, when his tires start sliding, you have to let off the brakes. It's like being on a motocross bike. You have to, you have to just hit the gas. When in yeah. doubt, yeah. gas it. And that if in, is if in doubt, open it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that, and that's <laughs> the equivalent on a downhill bike is just to let off the brakes. Yeah, yeah. it's quite a nerve-wracking experience. So, turning 40 years old this year, Mick Panner, one of the greats from Australian downhill, still competitive, still wants it as much as ever. Riding for Yeti Shimano, doing a lot of development actually on their e-bike engine. Great to see him back on the big rig though, here oh, in Rotorua. Sure. And I mean, everyone was just kind of like, oh, the track was just insane that first day. I couldn't really ride it. And Nick was like, oh yeah, man, I was having the time of my life. Oh. I, was, I was waiting for the Sui actually. It's I, true, <laughs> yeah. A former bronze Maybe medalist. that means he wants to win. It might be, yep. I mean, he's right there. I he mean, obviously. He's so competitive. Yeah, Nick yeah he is. Tommy's looking like he's going to be moving back from the USA, back to Cairns in Australia. High up there. And he won in row. Oh, fun clips there. One on the skyline track in 2020, the same day Tracy won as well. Fast down there. That's when it's fast, Mick Hanna really lets yeah, it go. Yeah, 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 he is yeah. wild on the fast. If there's pumping, if there's pedaling, he's good at these tracks where you're trying to gain speed the whole way down. Think of a Cairns, think of a kind of a Mount St. Anne. And look at him pedaling out. Yeah, Mick. He's been racing a bit of, still. Yeah, he's been racing a bit of everything. That's racing right. Racing EWS. Yeah. 
enjoying himself again. Yeah, Loving definitely. racing, he, still, he said that earlier. Yeah, and that was what he was telling me when he retired from World Cup Down. He's like, I'm just excited to be able to ride my bike more. Yeah. Oh, cool, that was quick out of there. This is, this is where he shines on stuff like this. Yeah, the quicker it is, the more comfortable oh, he feels. Sure. Silver medal in 2013 behind Greg Minar and Peter Maritzburg. Getting that triple. Well, we haven't seen him do a lot wrong. Just over a second back. You might need to get your antibiotics ready. Sig McHanna's on a run here. He on can the inside still pull it through back. there. In the back end a little loose, but he's going to be Can he pull a second back? He's got a lot of power in those sure. legs. This, yeah. is the, this is the part where he's like, when everyone else is tired, he's gaining speed. This is his bread and bar, and he's pushing hard. Stays low in that right hander. He's going to pedal hard into this double. 259. Three goes by. Mick Hanna goes third. 1.5 into the red. Great run, though. Yeah, that was that was awesome. For to see. a retired downer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just come out here and. Um, Four years old this summer. That's yeah, pretty good, that mate. So That's good. pretty good, Mikana. As Tracy, always great to see Mick racing. Always, I always enjoy commentating on Mick oh, Garner, man. He's been in downhill, I can't even remember. It, it seems like forever yeah. and ever, and he's still right there. Yeah, just he just loves riding bikes. Well, anyway, the next riders might turn things up. It's got that, uh, that high line, and he was able to, so that's where he came unclipped. And then as soon as that happens, he's not going to try to clip back in. You just kind of ride it on the, uh, kind of on the, on the sole. Able to find these lines. He always looks for little interesting lines going around that first bit. Able to skip that first whole hole. Letting that bike work. Jump, jumps off that. of that route. Look at that in the middle of that. <laughs> I'm just going to jump off of a diagonal route. No and watch problem. this exit speed here, dude. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Oh, oh that's too boom. much. I'm not down. I'm not down. What with it sliding at no. 35, 40 miles why an hour you, on tree routes? Why yeah. do you want to turn and lean over on diagonal routes? Wow. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> there he is. What well up, Mick? Well, five riders left at the top now, and everything, I imagine, will change. We got Loris Vergier, Bernard Kerr, Tahuta Rika Penn, Sam Blenkinsop, Louis Bruni, the last to drop, but this is the other fast Frenchman left in this final this afternoon. Loris Vergier, second in last year's World Cup overall. Oh, man, we saw some just incredible rides out of Loris last year at the World Cups, like, kind of doing some impossible runs. He is a genius on a mountain bike. Yeah, yeah, that's a great way to put it. It is, yeah. And that Rotary. is just so big out ah. there, but trouble. He's been down 6.8 back then. So Berger must have hit the ground. Right? So. I mean, there's a couple, so right before we see out of them come out of the trees, there's this line that they were doing where you have to hop kind of over a stump onto this off camber. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's what we're For talking sure. about. But yeah, I mean, the he fact knows, that he's doing that. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but yeah, right before you come out of the woods, there's a, one of the more technical sections. So I, I don't know if maybe it, he slid low. A couple of sections where if you if you mess up and get low, then Let's go. easy six second mistake. Yeah. Up to 27 years old, seven World Cup wins. Excuse me, seven World Cup wins in his career. Last year, taking the win in Val Sole, taking the win in Andorra. I mean, this is one of Downhill's big dogs. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I know they spent a bit, bunch of time in, in Queenstown, him in PA, just uh, getting, the, getting the bike dialed in. This is the first real test. Yeah. When you, when you have an off season that's a couple months long, you just kind of go into your cave, do your training, try to find as much time with the bike, with yourself, with mentally. Yeah. I respect the fact that Vergier and Bruni are here in yeah, these early sure. season races because they've kind of only got, well, yeah, they kind of got, only can lose really. Like they're the best in the world, you know, I don't know. I mean, to me, this is this is the perfect place to be because yeah. it, to me, it's, an, it's a huge advantage to come to a race like this because I would want to know. I, I want to know where, where's my bike at. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Where am I at? Where's my training at? So I think I wouldn't be surprised if you start to see more and more riders coming to the to the Crankworx World Tour early in the season. Just yep. 
because you need you need that intensity. You haven't had it for months. You need that marker. Yeah, for sure. But if you do get beat, it can have a very negative effect on you as well. <laughs> it's true. true. You know that's why yeah. I see how I see it. Anyway, Vergier then goes into 13th place. You'll see a lot, lot more of that man this summer. Don't you worry. Did you slip, buddy? Yeah, crash. There you go. Actually crashed. It was sleepy out there. <laughs> so it's still slippery up there. I don't know, man. It looks pretty, pretty clean, Loris. Looks uh, pretty, pretty clean. Oh, Happens. Congrats, dude. <laughs> Just kidding. Four to go. Oh, you know who's next, don't you? Oh. Save it. Save it. Oh, look at this. Watch this. This is beautiful. Yeah. Huh? Oh, and looks over at the camera. Oh, <laughs> of course he knows where it's at. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> Comes in hot. It's like, oh, I think I might go off the tracks. If I could take a foot off. So, Vergier's bid for the win here is done. Louis Bruni's still at the top. The last man, he will be the drop in. Also from Kanye Samur in the south of France. Those two grew up together. Swa leading though. Half a second only to Nico Malali. McHanna there, 1.5 back in third. Kaya Hearn fourth. And Toby Meek there, fifth at the moment. Svavo with a great run. Huh? Yeah, I mean, wow. Nico's been there for a long time. He has. So, strap in everybody. Bernard Kerr from Chiddingfoot Fold in Surrey, 32 years old now. He's been down actually in Queenstown the last few months. Getting all revved up, getting fit and coming off the back of his best ever World Cup season, this man. Yeah, got that number five painted on the helmet. 1.2 back at that first split then. So in touch, I would say. Yeah, and this, this is again where he'll shine over these jumps, just like incredible rider, yep. all around rider as well. It certainly Taking is. some pedals there. This is what I was kind of waiting to see. Three times the winner of Red Bull Hardline. That Woo, tells you he doesn't mind big great. jumps. Made a couple mistakes here in, in qualifying. I know he watched some film. Tried to get those, get those tidied up. And now he wants to get off those brakes down here as much as he can. It's smooth. <laughs> Let off the brakes. He's letting it go yeah, down there. He really is. Fast. Yep, that was fast. As he pulled that time back, as he got that 1.2 back. Come on, yeah. Get some hard pedals yeah. out of that turn as well. And they count. They really count. This Super is where it fit. gets physical, though. Yeah, and you and you have to. It's kind of frustrating as a rider because sometimes there's not much you can do. You can't really pump. You can't really pedal. You just have to kind of wait it out. Wait for the right moment to get to to gain speed again. Crowd favorite. Here we go into this steep section now. Taking that middle line oh. straight through the big hole. Little timing error there. He's definitely not 46 <laughs> seconds up, no. He'd like to be, and he'll probably run with it after the race. Yep, yep. And this is again where, where he'll kind of shine. So, really, once you get to this section, you know you only have a couple more spots. Yeah. Taking that middle line. Looks tidy. good. Yeah, he was tidy through there. Maybe definitely tidy through there. More pace. pedal strokes again now. Oh, it's going to be close. 255, 256 goes by. I don't think he's going to touch that time of Oliver Zwar now. He's outside it already. Kerr crosses the line. Goes into sixth place. 3.6 back there. Packing in there now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tining up. Wow. Three to go then. Three to go here in Rotorua, Crankworks. A local man next, Sam Blankensop after that, and then the reigning world champion. And I think this track, you know, this is one of those ones where there's... Oh, tidy, it's way too tidy, I think. Yeah, so when you hear him say that, what that means is it was really wet in practice, and I yep. just didn't take as much risk as I thought. Which is understandable because, you know, like, yeah, we all get to the bottom and wish we'd pushed harder very often. Yeah. It's true. Well, the, the track is totally different. So yeah. that run, right, like in practice or in qualifying when it was wet, that would have been, you know, the right amount of sauce. Yeah. But That's once fine. you come to the final, 
it's uh, there's more to it than just you have to kind of guess. You have to predict what the track conditions are going to be like. You can and let so, it go a little yeah, bit for more, sure. but you don't know how much. Right. That's and strong. sometimes right at the beginning of the track, you might have a slippery section. You say, ah, OK, this is what the track conditions are like. You set a pace, and it's the wrong pace. So Tahuto Ariki Pen, the winner of the Summer Series on the South Island now from here in Rotorua. Actually, his dad driving the shuttles in the bus, in the, excuse me, driving the shuttle buses in the forest is how they got into downhill. So, you know, this is a real homebred story, this. What can he do this afternoon? Well, the, I remember the first time I saw him was uh, in Pump Track in Rotorua at Crankworks. I heard he's unbeatable in Pump Track. Yeah, he's actually insane. <laughs> is that right? Yeah, it's ridiculous. So let's see what this man can do today, then. Third in qualifying. A massive race for this man in a woody nose. Probably better than anyone else here today. Yeah, he's ridden this track, grown up riding this track. And he's he, up. Oh, <laughs> look at that, 500s up then. So it's a good run already from Pene. Amazing. Can he keep it going? Oh, he's oh, he's now, good on the jumps. All these dudes are so good on the jumps. I love, I love watching them ride this stuff. Oh! oh and he oh, cased it. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry, I was going to say, he's going pretty low. Yeah. Get some pumps on that. Will it cost him actually a little bit of time yeah. there? I can't believe he's still, he, he, he knew that he wasn't going to make it. He still went for the toboggan. Mad. But back on the pace down here now. In the couch section. Chooses to kind of take that S. Yeah. Not go high, not the direct line. Quick down there, though. I think it, one of the things, we were talking about Bernard maybe not quite pushing in the conditions. Tohoto will know what these, how fast the dirt dries out. He will, he will absolutely right there. Little foul there as well. Carrying good pace along there, I'd say. Yeah. 11 at the World Cup in Montana and last year. This fell up, an amazing result for him. Yeah, able to hop on this uh, Mondrake factory team. And he looked quick down through there. In this steep section, now he comes in. Around the outside. Yeah, way right outside. Let's see if he can exit. hold it. I mean, you can see, again, adding some extra distance so that he can have this super Four fast. Back now. Four back now. He lost some time there. I'm wondering if he can pull a little bit back on this straight. Bit like a big triple in the middle there. Yeah. I don't think he'll Get find four there. seconds, though, now. Listen to the crowd going wild <laughs> no. for the local man. <laughs> oh! oh! For well, he needs to uh, go actually Is back up around the post where he left the track. The I one. saw him kind of, you know, get super low, suspensions oh, compressing. Oh, he was trying. Yeah, what yeah, can you do? yeah, for sure. You've got to respect that. Yeah. And that was he never, you know, here, home soil man, yeah, you hometown, to, you you're going to go for the win. You've got to go for the yeah, win. Yeah, for sure. Ooh. Well done to Huo. Exciting Ooh. run. The 20th yeah, place yeah, for him. You crash up top as well? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Ollie. <laughs> and then he's like, yeah, what can you do? That's just the, that's the way she goes sometimes. Well, <laughs> he was wild fast yeah. into that left hander there. I think he might have gone, uh, yeah, he might get DQ'd there because. Yeah, exactly, yeah. probably. He ain't going to care though, for crossing yeah. the line 20. -er. So, Sam at Blankensop will be the next to drop. And in 2022, he, he had an incredible wi right, uh, weekend, winning both the downhills. The one at Skyline and actually the one here in the Tana, on the Tanafar track as well before. God. Yeah, he is so good here. That, that, that track is so good. You, when it gets wet like this, Blinky is able to, that knees out style, kind of like, you know, just being able to let it flow. New bike. New sponsor for him this year, right in that crest line from Christchurch, 34 years old. Oh, and you know sure. how much he wants this. Yeah, new bike and actually just a brand new bike, period. Yeah, that's right. 
The winner of four Crangworks downhill races, all of them in Rotorua, plus one though. Good split number one. So let's see it. Another dude here, just so good on the jumps, that classic linky pedal. So beautiful over there. The 2018 King Crangworks lays oh. it out there. So good. Beautiful. And, and carrying good speed to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I mean, again, one of the, got the fitness, been on the circuit so long. Took that, his first World Cup win in Schleidening on conditions that look similar to this. All the way back in 2008. That's how long this man's been at the top of the sport. Oh, uh, he's fast down no, here as well. Good. We know he's going to push for the win today. Definitely. He's focusing it yeah, on yeah, the yeah. Crankworx World Tour this year. Yeah, and without, Anything less than a win for Blinky is going to be a disappointment here. He knows what he's capable of. That was fast around there on the pedals in that turn as well. Oh. Quick across there. And he's actually... He's he's going. Going. This yeah. is going to be good. This is going to be fast, I think. He's actually jumping over a lot of the soft spots. Two times the winner. Crankworks downhill series. Look. And here we go in this steep section now. Which line's he going to take? Oh, oh no! sections that we can't see the top of but there's a ton of roots right when you come into that section and so just and it's still only five back five back uh, yeah what a shame it's over though sam blank can stop then but this you know uh, this track can catch out yeah it's it sick. is what are you gonna do it's yeah. hard if you're pushing mistakes happen well i think that we've kind of seen that right like the sections that we would think would be kind of the most difficult the most gnarly haven't really been the sections that have caught people Well, only one rider remains at the top to deny Oliver Svart the win of this opening uh, stop at the Crankworx World Tour. That means, what, Ollie's on the podium, Nico's on the podium. Yes! Nico's on the podium, <laughs> baby! Uh, and I think he was on a run there, personally. Yeah, I think so, too. Fuck! What an absolute muffer. the tree. I couldn't see. Huh. Steaming up again? I wonder, yeah. I wonder, yeah. I that's mean, I, it's, it's so humid. humid. Yeah, it is. Oh, that's really nice. That was that was laying it out. Yeah, like that, that was lovely. Look at that, Ollie. Let's see this. Let's see. We got to pick this apart a little bit. See what Ollie did. Yeah, it was a spectacular run. That's right. And I'm interested to see if he pedaled a little bit more. Pump tucking, I mean. And he, I mean, that's perfect, right? Like, I think that that's kind of indicative of the rest of the run where he lands perfect. Again, taking really good pedals as soon as he gets into that soft stuff. And that section, I totally forgot about that, where he was just like, yeah, I couldn't break because I was out of control. I had to straighten it back out. That was a really good run. That yeah. was really, really good. New team. New sponsors. It feels, you know, it feels really good to come Brilliant. out for yourself, but also for the team to say like, hey, thank you. It's going to give him some confidence. Yeah. But there is the small matter. Ah, There's the small matter, man. the one fella that is left at the top of the mountain. That dude. That dude. You know the one? <laughs> you know the one? They're starting to call him five times. <laughs> the greatest rider in the modern era of downhill racing. Without a doubt, the five time, the reigning world champion from La Masana in Andorra, 28 years old now. Louis Bruni then makes his bid for glory here in Rotorua. What does he bring to this today? Can he do it? Just watch how still he is on the bike in all these ruts. Oh, and he sends it down there nearly. Best part of a second up at split number one though. Only Lowick. <laughs> yeah, Bruni, incredible. A broken collarbone last oh. season. Still came back to be world champion on the unforgettable day in Le Jay, France. No messing about. All but business. Super low, low on those on those jumps. Taking cranks up that up that little uphill. Go for an eight. He's won here twice before in Crankworx Rotorua back in 15 Maybe. and 16. That on the Skyline track though, not here on the Tanafar. Ooh, oh, little double across there. So deceptive. And yeah, he is, is yeah, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. And look how much air he you know. Totally. And not not pulling for it either. No, that's right. Oh. oh. Precision. Yeah, he's got so much speed in the middle. Oh. Yeah, but little touch there, but not too bad. Just up a bit in that turn. 
Keeps it a little bit lower and more direct across there. He looked fast, but I don't know. All his run was really good. It was. You're absolutely right. I have no idea. It's going to take something special from Bruni. Point seven to play with, though, that first split. Let's oh. see what he does. He doubles out of here he yesterday. He's the only there. guy to do it. And he does it again, look. Oh! Yes! Carries great pace now onto this last straight. And by half a second now with the advantage. He's coming down. Inside Almost there. Almost on fight with Bruni. Triple. Triple again. Little case. Yeah, and that's going to add up. All the way down here now. Perfect over that step up. Which line's it going to be? It's the middle. middle and it's going so fast. There. On the break over the top there, the back loose. Oh, it's looking like vintage Louis Bruni to me here today. Just a right couple. around the inside. Last couple of turns out for Bruni. He's going to get on those pedals. 257. Here he comes. Louis Bruni. Oh! Look at the time. 3.4, 0.34 Louis Bruni opens up 2023. Winning Cragworks Road to Rua. What a run that was from the man. No sign of slowing down yet. Uh, Under, he just delivers, right? He, he delivers. is outrageously good. <laughs> yeah. He's the greatest. He is outrageously good. <laughs> well done, Lewick. Yeah, what a run. Oh. Barely breathing. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I'd have said it's dark up in the yeah, forest now, yeah? yeah. So there's that, that hop. And he's just, everything about it, we talked about being able to predict the track, being able to say this is exactly what it can hold right here, taking this middle line we didn't really see. Did it's that. unbelievable when you watch Slow Mo and Bruni. It's the fact that, like, it, it's like, don't take this the wrong way, but it sort of looks like he's doing nothing. Like, yeah, just totally. Yeah, 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 still yeah, 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 yeah. He doesn't go back no, and I, forward. He doesn't no, go I sideways. Know. Well, you know, one of the things we talk about with that is because of that, he's able to get this, like, incredible bike setup because he's not moving around a lot. That's an amazing fact. Yeah. Is that right? Is yeah, for sure. Because his bike's so balanced then, perhaps. Right. It's balanced because, like, how are you going to get a bike balanced if you're over the front and yeah. over the back? And so... I think that they've worked on that. Him and Jack have actually worked on that to say, not only am I going to get the bike right, I'm going to get my body position bike so, I'm going to get my body position right so that the bike works. Them French don't leave any no. stone under. No, no. <laughs> no, they take care of every yeah. detail. So and it counts. Look fast. at that. Banging in there. Yeah. Knows exactly where you can push. Oh, well done, Louis. An amazing race run for you. How was it for you? Uh, thank you, Rob. Uh, super happy. It was so dark, actually. It was like nighttime at the top. Really? And quite uh, calm. So I was like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> and then I was pushing, pushing, pushing. And the track was actually holding up the, the speed really well. And uh, by the bottom, I was super tired. And I started to take weird lines that I never took before. <laughs> and I was like, Fred, what, French lines? Kind of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not the best ones, but then I held on and it was super tight. I'm super happy to make it first play, please. Loic, what is it about Rotorua that you just excel at? Why are you so good here? I don't know, Elliot. I was just, uh, I didn't do so well since 2016 when I last won uh, in Skyline. And I was super scared about this forest because the locals and the Kiwis, like, they're all super fast. And the track is like a certain type of layout where you have to pin it so fast between the trees, play with the roots, and the dirt's tricky. So I really didn't think I could make it. And so I'm really happy. I love this place. I love New Zealand. I feel like it's my second home. So I'm happy to do well here. Amazing to see it, Dave. I mean, do you say that, that, you know, you could come down here and get beaten by a New Zealand rider. I, I admire you as a world champion, actually, you know, riding these early season races. But I guess, you know, to win like you have today, that's going to give you good confidence. You now know you're somewhere where you need to be, right? Yeah, I feel like we still have a lot to learn on the bike. Really? Which yeah. is uh, which is super interesting too. Like, I feel like the margin is big, so hopefully we can find it. And uh, I'm just super happy Blanky didn't beat me today because <laughs> he's like a hunter, a dad, everything. But he told me he was going to beat you today. He said, yeah, yeah, Bernie's not so good in the off season. That's what <laughs> those were his exact words. Yeah, I don't want to tell tales, but <laughs> lately I got really, really slow in the off season races, but <laughs> I'm changing, man. So. Well, yeah.
Well, look, we're going to let you go, mate, but thank you very much for that. That was an incredible race run to commentate on, and uh, congratulations. Yeah, Thanks, brilliant. I'm happy you guys commented that. I love you guys. Yeah, we'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. We'll see you. There he is. What a champ. What a champion. Huh? <laughs> oh, we just got too many fans, you know. <laughs> yeah, but, Loic, I am, that. I am so that. happy for that. That whole podium is three. so for great. All of us are. Ollie and Nico. Yeah. Within a second, Mulali. Yeah, for sure. Insane. I, I'm, I'm going to get on the wait list for one of those bikes. Maybe it'll make me, make me that fast. Hey, why not? Eh? <laughs> Amazing. Great run to see that. Bernard Kerr down in seventh. Toby Meek, sixth place for him. Blenke crashing. Ends up in ninth place. But uh, yeah, amazing. Well, stay with us. We're back to take a look back at this race after this break. See you in a moment. It's always a struggle out here. There's a big crowd. You've thought about this kind of his whole life. The bike events everyone talks about. I'm going for podium for sure. It's more than just watching any championships. It's about progression, style, spirit, and community. I don't know if I have to go as fast as I can or if I have to look like I'm fast. And fast is fun. Here we go, we're off. An incredible run. Oh, mother That was a good one. Bike on Red Bull TV. I'm Matt Jones, I'm a professional freestyle mountain bike rider, and I'm attempting three world's first tricks that have never been done on a mountain bike. And I'm tackling this project with my twin brother, Jono. It's gonna be a journey. No points at all for that. Are you gonna hit me if I stand here? No. Matt Jones, design and conquer. Now available on Red Bull TV. Step aside for the ultimate urban downhill race series. Look at this! The world's best riders. Look at the pace of him now! The narrowest streets. Bowels. The gnarliest runs. Honestly, really physical one minute. Red Bull Cerro Abajo Race Series. Whoa! March 25th, live on Red Bull TV. Okay, well, welcome back then to Rotorua in New Zealand, where we've just seen the five-time world champion open up his 2023 account with a win. What a rundown it was. Nice. Great to see the Frenchman looking so good and so fast early in the season. Yeah. Pushing hard, though. He is uh, he's next level. And I, I thought it was super interesting that he said there's, there's so much more work to be done on the bike and that he was nervous to get beat by Sam. But you know what, right? What we know, that isn't just chat. He's, no. not, he's not like we're revving everyone up. No, That's no. the truth. Bruni's a scientist. He knows there's more to come out of that bike. For sure. And it's early season for him, really, yeah. you know? It is. He's a man who peaks, doesn't he, for the big days. Well, for sure. And I think it's one of those things where you say, well, didn't you do testing last year? Wasn't And so they make changes. Yeah. The whole frame is totally different. They'll have different internals in the suspension, all of these things. He never stops pushing the boundaries. Well, anyway, he did ride fast today, and he needed to, Louis Bruni, because this man, Oliver Zar, pushed him to point three. You were point three four off five-time world champ. Congratulations, mate. That was sick. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> I was you are. I think you? Casting FMD racing is too. I don't want yeah. a bad, that wasn't a bad start. Yeah. I reckon Tony's pretty happy back home. <laughs> yeah. He'll be watching. Everybody else was... Well, Ollie, Ollie tell me about the run. Like, I always think it's interesting. 
did it feel like a, a, a podium run? Did it feel like one of those runs? Or was this one of those tracks where you're just like, I can't really tell where I'm at? No, that's exactly right. Like the conditions were like drying up, but I don't know, you're kind of sort of making like micro mistakes the whole way down. And then it's not until you get to the bottom and you're like, okay, yeah, pretty good. And you're watching other people and I'm like, surely they're going to come in front of me soon. But how difficult is it to gauge how hard to yeah. push that? Because it is pretty slick, right? I mean, we, you could see, we could see certain parts of the track were really slippery, but mm. it felt like probably the whole track was pretty slippery still. Yeah, it's more the, the dirt sort of drying up a bit, but you get a heap of sniper routes out there. So, and the light was pretty bad in practice. So you couldn't really see them. Um, but yeah, it dried up a fair bit, but there's also spots like there. Yeah. Super Ollie, sticky. Tell me about this. <laughs> uh, I said you got offline and just yeah. held it wide up. Yeah. Good, I was right. <laughs> yes! Yeah. And nah. just held it wide open, right? Literally, yeah, I started like <laughs> front wheel drifting a bit, and then it, the best thing in that situation is to let go of the brakes. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. Wait, why, why is that though? Why do you let off the brakes? What does that do? Momentum forward, and then your brakes aren't jacking up your bike, and momentum just... Spit you forward, I think. Oh, okay, yeah. You just get out of it as quickly as you can. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's also why I put it as well. They, they, yeah. So where did you get offline at? Uh, here, there's a deep rut, and I sort of... Oh, I, yeah, you cut your pedal, yeah. right? I think it was my shoe. Was it? Look at that! And then, yeah, had a bit too much speed because I wasn't on the brakes. That's okay. And then right up against the stove. It looks wild. And then I accidentally went to the right here and it was pretty smooth. Okay, okay. I was like, oh, I thought that might have been on yeah. purpose. He's trying to find some smooth lines. It did work out. It did work out. <laughs> yeah, How, was one. this part, did it, was it as slippery as it looked right at the bottom of that with all those roots? Well, I think because of like, how bad Friday was, everything seems good now. Right. But if you came here today as your first day, you'd think it's real bad. Yeah. So I think, uh, yeah. It's just a lot better than what it was. So what did it feel like, you know, on the new bike? You changed everything but your pedals, you said. Yeah, yeah no, I said to my mechanic then, like, it it feels good going fast on that bike. Mm. Um, and then, I don't know, for me, because I haven't been doing this, like, professionally for long at all, like, I got a new contract, I was on a factory team. It's like, you kind of have all this little self-doubt in the off-season. You're like, do I deserve this? But Am it's I good pressure. enough? It's yeah. pressure, yeah. right? I mean, you've made the step up. Yeah, and it's sort of... I like to see point three behind Loic, and I've been. I said to Mick and Nico on the podium how many years I've watched them from home, mm. and to be sitting with them, it's so. Yeah. Yeah, it's all just a bit surreal. Yeah. What is the? We kind of always talk about that, like the jump from being, you know, you weren't a privateer, but you were were not on a factory team. So, what has it been like? What is the biggest change that you see? Well, you, uh, it sounds pretty simple, but you just have a lot of time to focus on yourself and the riding and the training, and. I know people say like more pressure, but I feel like as a privateer, you might have more pressure because if you don't qualify, you go back to work and it's mm. like, you could either make or break your career. Like you might have a career or you yeah. don't. Right, right. So it's, I don't know, it's a different sort of dynamic. Yeah, for sure. Like you have to, you have to perform because if you don't, then like you might not be able to ride You're your bike back, anymore. Back <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. So there's a different pressure. Yeah, it's a different pressure. Well, you have delivered a fantastic start to 2023, mate. That's incredible to get that close to Bruni. And, uh, yeah, we're going to say goodbye to you, but well done. And we definitely look forward to seeing what you're going to do for the rest of the season. This is going to be good, I reckon. This is going to be good. I'm happy. You're all set up, mate. <laughs> well done. And, of course, this is only the start of the Crankworks World Tour here, the week, the festival week in Rotorua. Friday next week, we got Pump Track. Saturday, at Speed and Style. And next Sunday, Dual Slalom and Slope Style. At the next one in Cairns, I'm going to be enjoying all these events, but I'm out of here tomorrow, so I'm a bit upset to be missing I know. it all. Same. And there's yeah. Bruni and his mechanic, Jack. What a team they are. I'm sure they'll be like, well, you know, my bike wasn't quite working. And then I did this, and Jack's just like, okay, yeah, sure, 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 sure. I think I'm going to go to the bar now. And... How was it? Thank you. I'm trying to hear what they say, but uh, couldn't understand it's a word French. of it. <laughs> well, that was a great opener, wasn't it, to this Crankworx yeah. World Tour? I mean, a world-class track, a world-class field, amazing. A well, great start to it the just, season. It just New Zealand and this Rotorua Crankworx always feels so good. You've been at home. We get to see our friends. The vibe here is just incredible. Yeah. Everyone, all the staff is just amazing. So. Yeah, it's it's just so good to be back. I've loved it. I've had one of the best weeks. I've ridden my bike. I've done everything I was supposed to do at Crankworx. It's been incredible. We want to thank you at home for joining us. I'm going to thank you, Elliot. Thanks for joining me. We saw Louis Bruni, the five-time world champion, deliver the opening win of 2023. A fantastic race. We'll see you next time on Crankworx.